Episode 104, Silly Billy. Introducing Ben Parson on the BTS Creative Academy podcast, Uncut. With me, your host, Martin Colton. Well, I had a, I've got like a podcast set up, which I set up a few years ago, but I never really did anything with it. And it's like, a, it's got like, like this. I don't even know what most of it is because sound's not really my... No, well, no, the technology is not really my sort no. of thing. <laughs> but like, it. literally, it's like it's so convoluted. I had to get someone to teach me how to set it all up, and then I took a video, and it was just. It, I was like, this takes so long to set up. Now you just and it kind of it kind of puts you off, doesn't it? Doing yeah. these things, right? You have these ideas of like, yeah, I'm going to start a podcast, but then you start getting all the technology together, and when it isn't your thing. It, it, yeah. You start to go all of a sudden. It should be my thing, really. As he a should, thing. yeah, as a, as a, <laughs> as a technical, as a technical <laughs> person. But, yeah. but there are different sides to the technical stuff, isn't yeah. there? There's yeah. the technical stuff that you do within a theatre, and then the technical stuff on a computer is slightly different, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's technical. Technical is just such a broad yeah. spectrum word, isn't it? But yeah, I mean, I never really was uh, born to be in the technical side of things. If it's no. that just how I, it just sort of fell in there. And 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 this is like we're already getting onto the topic. Of, by the way, we've started. Oh right, because that you know it's, that. It's <laughs> a soft we're, start. Just... we're in. This is the start of the. Where's the, the intro? You... Yeah, the intro. So we'll do the official start. So the intro. Do you know the intro? No. No, there is a little intro. Okay, oh, right. we do a little countdown and then we clap and that's it. We're in. So we go three, two, one, clap, and it starts. We do it together. We do it together. Here right. we go. Three, two, two one. one. That, We're in. That wasn't, that wasn't in time, but that's fine. <laughs> that'll do, that'll do. It, it's, it's all right if it's not in time every time. But, <laughs> <laughs> but here we are on the stage, the main stage of the Playhouse. Yeah, Theatre your, One. Y- your home? Yeah. This place, yeah. Really, isn't it? Yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it certainly has been for a long time, yeah. Yeah, good, what, 13 years? I've worked, I've worked here for 13 years, mm-hmm. yeah. But, like, yeah, there's a lot of history yeah. like, for, me, for the family and stuff here, for some Local boy. Yes, you are very much, yeah. And you've, you've almost become the star of the town, you know what I mean? I wouldn't go as far, that's, they're <laughs> your you words. Every, I see you on, yeah, yeah, it's me saying it. I see you on every gas pump, every Christmas, <laughs> on every bench, every yeah. Christmas. I get I get messages every now and again of someone going, oh, I'm just filling, filling up uh, my car with your face. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's weird, it's a bit weird, but yeah, yeah. it's um, it's definitely been become, become like home, like for sure. Yes, yes. Um, and yeah, I'm very grateful for it. Um, so you're you're an actor, but oh, you're I also, think so. <laughs> but you're also a technician. And this was like the re- one of the really interesting things I wanted to chat to you about mm-hmm. is you have these two very you work both within the- theatre, mm-hmm. but they're very different th- skill bases to have, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, like I wanted to, I wanted to I've always wanted to be an actor. Like, uh, with actually weirdly linking it all together, the first time I performed was on on this stage when I was eight. Wow. Um, it's also the only time that me, my mum, my dad, and my sister were ever in a show together. Yes, yeah, because you've got, you got a big fa- you got a big family history of theatre. Yeah, you? yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So like, especially in, like, well, in Harlow, mm-hmm. the, the thing, but yeah, that was the only time that the four of us were in a show together, and then the theatre closed after that show, so, you know, we've never <laughs> done it again, just in, just in fear yeah, that we might close the theatre. Just in case, theater. yeah, yeah. Your, is that somehow your yeah. fault that the theatre closed? Yeah, because <laughs> that's, and actually that's, so that, after that show, the theatre closed, um, I mean, I, 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 I probably should know, because I've worked here for long mm-hmm. enough to know why it did, I think it was funding related, yes, yes. something to do with the council, I'm pretty sure, like, lack of funding to keep it open, mm-hmm. and actually that's when Harlow Theatre Company moved, to Vicky Hall, which is how I met you. Yeah, and that's kind of sort of, this is your home, and that's kind of sort of yeah. my home, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Victoria Hall, in a way. Yeah, well, that was my home for, for yes. a long time, a long yeah. time, but... Um, yeah, and your yeah. family, and again, your family's home, like, so you've yeah. got a family there. Yeah, well, they all moved, didn't they, over there? Cause they, were the ones, was... they were the ones that kind of started and built that place, didn't they? Yeah. They didn't build the, the brick. The yeah, brick, the, the brick they, and mortar, they, yeah. they, they changed uh, what was essentially like community venue yeah into a theater yeah. didn't they your family yeah. and others of course. yeah oh yeah look yeah the yeah. whole kind of that kind of mm. team of people that were, that all came from here yes do you know what i mean so yeah it was and i guess like you're you're the legacy <laughs> are you now i mean again of, of, of what they created i guess again in you a way could, you, your words not mine. <laughs> you know uh yeah i mean it's nice it's nice to have that that history like uh as I say, 
you know, I was the first first show I ever saw was also here. Mm -hmm. So my mum was Aladdin in ninety one, ninety two. Right. Uh, she was Aladdin. Yeah, she played. She played the she, mate. She played, she played the Aladdin in the panto. In the panto. Right. Um, so I. So that was the first show I ever saw. Mm -hmm. um, my dad was actually under understudy for Abanaza, which he knew he was going on for. Mm -hmm. So he did actually go on as Abanaza, and I'd seen it several times by this point because obviously mum was in it. Yeah. So I pointed out all the things he did differently to the actual <laughs> Abanaza. I was like, "You didn't put your hood up, by the way." And he's like, "Yeah, thanks for pointing that out." Um, but he was also at, he was also the understudy for the Dane, which he didn't learn because he didn't think he'd have to, have to go on, and then he very nearly did, and then right. he regretted not knowing it, so he went home and learned it all. <laughs> but yeah, so then, yeah, then they said so that was the first thing I saw, and then the first show I ever panel I ever worked on was also weirdly Aladdin. Right. And then the first show I ever wrote here was Aladdin. So there's this family connection and the show connection. It's yeah, all it's, like intermixed it's in all some weird. some it's... weird way, like the the universe is pulling it all together for you, yeah, isn't it? And it connecting the connecting the dots yeah it's weird mm. it is weird like how that kind of all came about because i yeah it's just like the show that the building like you know like i never wanted to be work backstage i wanted to be on the stage uh yeah. and then just an opportunity came uh you know and i'd sort of been job hopping for a little while and sort of not really knowing what to do and then an opportunity came to sort of essentially an apprenticeship sort of thing for six months here and then, sort of, since then, I that's how I that's basically I I I'd, I had no idea what to do backstage. I mean, mm -hmm. it was it was it was a bit overwhelming at first because there was a lot of a lot of things that you had to learn. And you make a lot of mistakes and yeah. stuff like that. And you, you're I'm, I'm assuming when you were young, your main thing was you wanted to be an actor. Yeah. You wanted to you wanted to be on the stage. You wanted to perform. Yeah, always. So what what took you on that slight detour then to to go backstage? Uh, money. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's no, yeah, uh, that's like you know, I needed a job, uh, and it came up, and it came up here, and I was like, okay, cool, and it was, it was close enough to, you know, it was, it was within the, I was under no illusions mm -hmm. uh, that you know I wasn't going, oh, I tell you what, I'm going to work in, I'm going to work at the Playhouse, and then I'll become a star, for, and I'll get in through those means. That wasn't ever what I thought. I just thought this is adjacent to the kind of things that I want to do yeah. and therefore it's nice to be in the same industry and, mm -hmm. and do sort of similar things. And there's a bit more there's there's a bit more stability, isn't there? Working as part of a technical technical side of theatre well, rather than being on the stage itself. Oh yeah, I mean obviously like not necessarily if you're a freelance doing it, but obviously mm -hmm. because it's payroll, like, you know, it's it's a it's a yeah. monthly salary, yeah. So there is that stability and mm -hmm. you know, I just learnt learnt from people here and there was there were you know, been lucky to work with some really great people who sort of took took me under their wing and taught me you know stuff and and then you know took some of my own initiative and then yeah and then randomly like that apprenticeship ended and I was kept on as a casual and I was looking for a job at Christmas and I spoke to someone who had come into the theatre uh, with the Easter pantomime and I was like have you got any jobs over Christmas um, and they were like weirdly I do at the Playhouse so I worked at the Playhouse but I didn't actually work for the Playhouse the first year I was right. working for the company mm -hmm. and it was uh, it was um, Aladdin, obviously, as I pointed out. But weirdly, I was meant to be an acting ASM, so okay. I was actually meant to be in the pantomime. Mm -hmm. But the what's it, sorry, what's an ASM? Uh, assistant stage manager. So okay. I was in charge of like making props, which I'd never done before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I can make them props. Don't you worry about that. Give me some glue gun and some gaffer tape. I'll sort. Of, I'll make it. There were some. There were some ropey pops. I'm not mm -hmm. going to lie. It wasn't my finest work. Yeah. Uh, but I wasn't working with much of a budget. I think. In fact, I'm pretty sure I had to pay for everything on my credit card and try and recoup the money back, mm -hmm. which that's not how it's meant to be done. No, but it often works that way in theatre, doesn't it? Well, it often, I mean, it, certainly it happens a lot within the community space. Yeah, but this is meant to be a professional production. Oh right, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, and mm. uh, but uh, I mean that company are no longer, so uh, mm -hmm. they will remain nameless because the people are still working in the industry. So I'm not going to say who it was, but yeah. yeah, they weren't they weren't amazing at that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I did get the money back, so don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so then I was meant to be in it, but the general manager at the time was like Paul Rank and was like, I don't want him to be in it because he's too young for mm -hmm. that part. So obviously I was a bit like, ah, oh. I was probably gutted because I was yeah, like, yeah. oh. I, Get to do, you know, get to do a bit of both. But that'll be nice. But you know, it was probably the right decision. In fairness to him, like mm -hmm. you know, I was twenty three, meant to be playing the Emperor of Peking. I mean, it is acting. Yes, yeah. I could have done a great job. I'm sure I've been a brilliant emperor. But he made the decision he made, and I wasn't in it. So. Yeah. How did that feel? What to have not been part of it when you you had that lead up that you thought you was going to be part of it, and then you took it away from you based upon your age. 
yeah, I was gutted. Mm. I was gutted. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, I'd you know I'd got obviously excited. I told people. And I mean, like it's, you know, it's not necessarily the biggest thing, but you know, it's like paid acting work. It's like that's the mecca if you want to be an actor, exactly, getting yeah. paid to do it. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like I'd spent my pretty much, well, not even pretty much, like my entire up until that point doing it for free as mm -hmm. a hobby because I loved it. Do you know yes, what I mean? Yeah. So then the opportunity to then get paid to do it, mm -hmm. to then be told, oh no, you're not doing it. You just you'll be, in, yeah. you'll be backstage. It takes a box of credibility, doesn't it? At that point, it's almost like okay, I can do this as some kind of living. Yeah. If you dig it, once you get paid for it that first time. Yeah, you feel like oh, I actually am worth something. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? But uh, yeah, it's weird. I'm, I'm, I did make it in the in the Ghost Gag as the Mummy. Oh, okay. So, you know, yeah, that's, I did, that's I not did. a bad gig. I played that so, the ghost game. Yeah, it's, it's quite fun, actually. Yeah, but then no one knows it's you. No, so. no one knows it's noon. You, and you feel that buzz from the. I'm, I was Jack and the Beanstalk when I did the go, go, ghost gag on this stage. And um, yeah, I could you hear the kids screaming. How many seats are in here? 400. 400, 400 people screaming. You feel that energy, don't you? Yeah. And you're running around, and you're not you're not doing too much. You're not you're not really performing, but the energy is a buzz, yeah. isn't it? And but and they're reacting to you solely in that mm. moment. Yes. Yeah. They're waiting for you to. They're come waiting up. for you to come you out. Come so when you yeah. come yeah. out, it's yeah. Yeah. It's this. I mean, I, I mean, I was loving it. Like mm -hmm. my parents came to see me as the mummy. They yes. wouldn't have come to see it otherwise. It was, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they weren't. They weren't big. Uh, like they weren't. They didn't like the way that Panto had gone. Uh, I think it's fair to say, like, because from when my parents were doing it, it's sort of changed quite a lot, I think. Like, yeah. it's still the same model, and uh, but like, the pantomimes I remember when I was younger, there were a lot more, it's a story. There was none of this, there was a lot less coming out of character. Like, you talk to the audience, but you talk to them, and you take them, do you see what I mean? Like, okay. there's a lot more like, because uh, you always, you know, pantomime has, you break the fourth wall. Do you know what I mean? That's that's what it is. That's why the Americans don't get it. They're like, what's going on? Yes, yeah. I don't understand what's <laughs> happening here. Uh, and so, like, th back in the day, that they were a lot more start the stories, tell the story, uh, you do your routines, but they're set routines, and, you know, things don't, you know, if something goes wrong, you try and glaze over it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you always, oh, well, I was always taught, like, if the mistake happens on stage, obviously it's not meant to happen, so you ignore it and you try and, work it in without bringing attention to it. It's one of the things I love about pantomime is that there is that little bit of, especially playing a, a character that I get to mm -hmm. play now where I, if something goes wrong, I can choose to ignore it if I think it's ignorable or I can bring everyone's attention to it and that will get a laugh as well. Yeah. And there is that freedom, whereas mm -hmm. like you do a straight piece of theater and like, you know, it's, you're, you're, it's in a bar and then yeah. all of a sudden, you know, you're, you cut your finger or the, the set falls over and you're like, I need to put that back up, but I need that to not look like it's the set. Mm. And, you know, or, or something like that. You know, it's, uh, yeah, it's a lot more free in pantomime. But yeah, the, I think back in the day, there was a lot less of the kind of drawing attention to things. It was just, oh, really? yeah, I think that's that's my feeling. Again, mm. I, my memory is slightly warped. It's a lot, it was, I was very young. Yes, when, yeah, and when you've heard were, some stories, haven't you? From yeah. Your, from your parents having been yeah. heavily involved. Yeah. So let's go, let's go to a little bit of family history. So, your mum and dad were both actors mm -hmm. in the local community scene, in the local panto here, mm -hmm. panto here yeah. at the Playhouse. I mean, so going a step further back okay. than that, my granddad started Harlow Youth Theatre. Right. I believe went in 71, but certainly very early in uh, the Playhouse opening. Which so opened the Playhouse in, opened in the early 70s? 71. 71. 71. So he was yeah. here, at the, your granddad was yeah. here? I believe so. The, pretty much at the beginning. It, certainly if it wasn't, bang on the you yes. know, doors opening there he is but mm -hmm. certainly in the very early days of the theatre he, he started Harlow Youth Theatre which is actually where my parents met right. so they actually met at Youth Theatre obviously my dad brings his, his dad's running the thing <laughs> with his two brothers um, right. and so they actually met at Harlow Youth Theatre and they did oh on teen millions of uh, productions like you know yeah. Uh, and yeah and then obviously they did uh, pantos and like uh, theatre two shows, theatre one shows. Mm -hmm. I think I, I, I have a memory of my mum being playing Frenchie in Greece on, on here. I remember seeing that. Right. Um, and then I did, yeah, so I did Blitz, uh, Lionel Bart's Blitz in 95 oh, or 96, I think it was 95. It wasn't 95, 96 when this place closed down? Yeah, so it might have been 95. Yes, yeah. Yeah, because um, it was definitely the last show, because I remember obviously being in it and then the, uh, there was a big sign that said Blitz and it stayed up 
the entire time it was shut. Right. So obviously as a little kid, a little eight year old, I was like, oh, I was in that. <laughs> Every time I was like, oh, that's the show I was in. And it was there for like like a year. It right, just okay, up, no one yes. did anything. The, yeah. the building just, doors closed. Every, wow. Someone said to me that uh, like there was a display, because it was obviously Blitz is obviously about World War mm -hmm. uh, Two. Uh, so on the mezzanine upstairs, there was like a Anderson shelter that had been built, like a sort of interactive thing, and that was all still here. Mm -hmm. like, Do you have any remem memories of what that felt like to your family at that time, when the playhouse closed down? Do you remember anything? Do you know what? I, I, I don't. Mm -hmm. Like, that, that wasn't something that I think they... I don't remember them just... I really don't, actually. No, no you was never, young, so it's quite a yeah, hard question to I never, ask. It. I never have given that any thought, actually, but mm -hmm. no, I, I remember... I remember Vicky Hall... Being kind the, of being the next, the next step. step, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, but I, I, I do remember that, and again, I don't know if it was '95 or '96 or, but they, I do remember they did a pantomime at Vicky Hall. Yeah, Stick Witties and other. Yeah, things. I believe that to be mm -hmm. true as well, and like that was weird because obviously I'd watched the pantos here for mm -hmm. a number of years because my mum and dad were associated with them. Yeah, and all of a sudden it was like. You know, and they the thing is they have the workshop here, so it was all all the sets were built out to the side blocks, and it was yeah, all built so you can, bespoke. You can drop things. Yeah, in. it was like, huge. The scale yeah, of the yeah. panos here was so huge because and it was all built in house. All and of a sudden, to like a small, <laughs> yeah, small little contained yeah, space. And the really, band are on really stage tall. inside this little. Yes, yeah, it was yeah. like I was like, this is this is not the same. Mm. But I mean, you know, it was brilliant that they they were able to put yes, a, a yeah. panto on so that the Harlow had still had a pantomime, which mm -hmm. was absolutely brilliant. Um, so I sort of remember that, but yeah, I don't, I don't have any memory of, of what that was like for them actually. No. Like that's... Do you think that? Do you think they showed you anything or taught you anything, seeing them continue like that, continue and not giving up, losing, losing their their place where they do their creative thing, where they do the the passion that they love, um, and that being taken away from them, that they continue to to push forward. I mean, you know. I'd like to say yeah, but no, <laughs> like because I because no. I just, I just wasn't. I was too young. I was yes, you know yeah. too busy with pogs and yeah, pogs. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was po pogs were around yeah, that time. Yeah, they were. Yeah, pogs and stickers. And yeah. In all. fact, I've started recollecting pogs. Have you actually? <laughs> yeah, I've been going on eBay. <laughs> the actual got, OG pogs. Yeah, I've got a little tub. Oh, the li I remember the little tubes. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Oh, we, they got banned in high school because yes, because people, people, people in the slammers yeah, and, and they nick, yeah, people would yeah, nick each other's arguments. Pogs. Yeah, but I did enjoy pogs. Yeah, so. I remember Star Wars pogs. Yeah, Tazos. Tazos. Yeah, they were pretty cool. <laughs> but yeah, I was, I was too busy with that sort of stuff. Like yeah. I didn't like, and my parents didn't wouldn't have been like, if they were upset about it. That's just not saying they would have had a conversation with an eight year old about. It, I wouldn't have no. thought so. But like I said, I remember the kind of momentum of Vicky Hall building up. Obviously, mm -hmm. there wouldn't have been lots of shows that I would have been able to see. Like I say, I remember seeing Grease here because I like the film. Yes. And then yeah. I remember complaining that the, there was lots And a show of, like that different. wouldn't work in a smaller space. So they started to, I, I feel like the shows there started to become a bit more like the serious kind of yeah. straight plays. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and and that, hence why I think there was only ever one pantomime there is because it didn't really kind of suit that small environment. Yeah. It suited more of a, more of a Christmas or family show. Yeah, that and that's space. that's where that's where it sort of led into. I mean, mm. I I th I'm pretty sure at the point on which I think I went travelling, which is when I when it broke. But I mean, I was I did the the Christmas show at Vicky Hall for like I'm sure it was ten years on a bounce. Right. It was definitely a very long consecutive. Cons you were there every year for ten years. I'm pretty sure. Wow. Uh, I can't remember. Because I think the first time we met was on a Christmas show. It was Voyage yeah. of the Dawn Treader. Right? Voyage of the Dawn Treader. I'm fairly certain. Yeah, that were, you're thinking about it, that was my second show at that place. What was your first one? Rope. I said never Alan, Alan Jones directed yeah. Rope with Jim yes. Thompson and Ian Hatfield. No, I never saw, I didn't see that. Although I do think I feel like I remember, I remember the early days of Vicky Hall, see all the mm -hmm. posters as they as they did show, the posters the went up and build, I feel like I remember yes. the Rope poster. Mm -hmm. There were a few. I remember the bouncers poster. Yes. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, they used things, to be all around. Little they things could do just... it coming back, really, couldn't they? Oh yeah. I, 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 I like the, the little things that just mm -hmm. remind, remember about the, you know, that mm -hmm. time, and it was because it was all still really new. It's still fairly new. I can't remember what the first one. I'm trying to think what the first one I would have done down there was. It may have been Dawn Treader. Mm. I remember. I remember. Let's go back to that time, Voyage of the Dawn Treader. I was fairly new in the place in the community theatre scene. And I saw you already at that point as someone that was young. You was, you're a couple of years younger than me, aren't you? You're fair. I, I mean, I'm 37 now. Yeah, so you're three or four years younger than me. 
but I saw you someone sort of at that point even like leading the way and heavily in a heavy input within the community theatre scene. I'd just been doing it for a long mm. time, like and like you know my parents uh, were really instrumental in like instilling how to do it and I actually like I think like there's a lot of there's a lot of snobbery around you were very professional at a young age well I was well, I'd, I'd have been my ass handed to me if I weren't yeah like, my mum yeah. wouldn't my dad wouldn't have I remember uh doing so the second thing I ever did here which must have been after it had reopened or maybe it was before no oh no it was it was after it reopened because I was 12 mm -hmm. uh and I did Bugsy Maloney theatre too um, and it was like the first proper show I'd done probably since uh, since Blitz. I'd have to. I'm not anyway. I was twelve uh, or eleven, going on twelve, and they ran a thing called Beginners to Stage. I don't know if you yes, are aware yeah, of it. That, yeah. um, and Ian Greenwood was Bugsy Malone, um, and it was him that got me in trouble. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, and obviously the Playhouse. He got me in trouble quite a lot. As well. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. He has that bit. No, we boy. Yeah. Um, and so, and obviously he's he's a bit older than me as well. So I was 11, and obviously the, the playhouse is huge. Mm. So to an 11 year old, like playing like tag and this is a brilliant place to do that. Yeah, so, yeah. hide and seek. Yeah, and all yeah. that sort of stuff. Absolutely brilliant place. There's places to hide everywhere mm -hmm. and right there's like the concourse is long. I remember right, anyway, we did Bugs and Malone here and he, uh, you know, I was with Ian and there was another chap whose name uh, I cannot remember. Mm. Um, and then we were late back to the rehearsal, so it was on like a lunch break, and we were late back, and obviously like, oh mate, I was I in trouble when I got home. <laughs> like, my, I could tell my look at my mum's face, is like, I am in big trouble, like. And obviously he's the lead, like, and they've yeah, started, sure. they've just gone, well, we've got to start, we're starting the rehearsal, and, he, mm -hmm. and like, he's meant to be singing the song, and he walked in and had to sort of pick up the song, and I went into a spot that I was meant to be in. Oh, and this my. is a rehearsal? Yeah, it's just a rehearsal, yeah. 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 And, uh, oh, I was, I was read the right act when I got home, like, it was like, well, if you want to be in shows, like that's not how you behave. You mustn't, you know, never to do that. You need to go in, you need to go and apologise to the director. Like, you know, and it's that sort of thing. And I was, you know, and that's right. That's the right thing to do. It's well, why is that right? Because it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's the way to conduct yourself. Like, you know, uh, no one's that put that person wouldn't want to work with someone again. You go, oh, no, I don't want to work with that child again. Mm. He, was, he was a right pain in the, you know, and I was being led astray by Ian Greenwood. <laughs> um, but but yeah. equally, like, you know, it was, it was instilling the you know the right set of uh, I don't know not yeah, the right set of morals yeah the right sort of compass for if you want to do this thing you've got to take it seriously you've got to take it seriously and realise that it's not just about you as an individual mm. you're part of a team mm -hmm. it's a team it's a t it's a, like it's it's a very strange thing that we're playing I know you're very in into sport yeah so I don't re and I'm not so much into sport so I don't know if this analogy kind of works out but when you're playing like football. You are definitely a team, and you definitely yeah. have to come together to move that ball around. But when you're an actor, you do so much solo work, don't you? Mm. You do so much solitary work, like learning your lines, yeah. going away to different groups here and there. But then when you come onto the stage, you then have to come together, yeah. don't you? I, and definitely. when you're in rehearsals, you have to come together. You can't be a solo I think, player anymore. Can I you? mean, unless you do a one act, Matt, one act lunch. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But then even then, you're even then you've got your crew. Yeah. No, because that's just you're just counting the actors then. Because yeah. the crew, they're all part of the team. Yeah. Well, yeah and you, then the director mm -hmm. and then sound design, line yeah. design, all those people. But yeah, like it's it's a the thing is, it's using the uh, sporting analogy there. Like you can have an individual that can elevate your team. Mm -hmm. Like you can have a particular performance that's elevating your pe the piece of theatre that you're doing, but you also can be let down by a weak link, and that can be something that someone can. Do you know what I mean? So like you are a team because mm -hmm. you all need to elevate everything together and work together. Because if you've got good camaraderie with someone, then that can really like you know I, I, the, the guy that I do uh, panto with who plays the Dane like. We we like being on stage together. Mm -hmm. That makes a massive difference. It's immediately you're just, yeah. especially in something like Panama. But um, yeah, like I think that's massively important. And like yeah, and that that is you know, things like that that my parents instilled in me is like, you know that that's kind of you know lived 
through everything that I've I've done. Do you know what I mean? And like, mm-hmm. and also, it's, you know, it is my mum and dad, but it's not just them. It's it's all of the people that were at Vicky who were around that time. You know, Paul Johnson directed a lot of the Christmas shows. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jane Pragnall, she did a lot of the Christmas shows. Working with people like Jim. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? People that were a lot older than me, not too much older. I don't mean to throw shade at those people, <laughs> uh, but you know, like people that are older than me, they've been yeah. doing it for for longer and stuff like that. You pick up the good mm-hmm. bits from them, and like you know, people people get a little bit like uh, I think there can be a lot of snobbery towards amateur dramatics and amateur yes, theatre yeah. because people it think, gets a bad rap. Yeah, it? and and because there is some really awful amateur theatre, mm-hmm. but there is some equally awful professional theatre. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it, 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 it's it's I'm not gonna say it's luck of the draw, but like. There's bad in both situations, yeah, yeah. and amateur theatre has done me the world of good. Like, I wouldn't be able to do it. I don't think either of us would be sitting here right now if it wasn't for amateur theatre. Definitely not. 100% not. No. Like, you know, and the thing is, I look at it now and I go, I get the opportunity now to do the thing, to do the thing that I did for free for money. Like, I don't do it full time for money, like, because I do work as a technical yeah. manager for the majority of the year, but like, for those. For the bit of t- uh, time at Easter and the bit of time at Christmas where I do this for a profession, I'm like I'm doing the thing that I did for free, gave my away my time so that I got the opportunity to be on stage and perform. I did that as a hobby because I loved it. Yeah. And now I get to do that a bit for free and like and without that I wouldn't be doing that. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like 100%. that's that's how I that's how I learned, mm-hmm. man. Like I would you could you have learned that? So you, what did you what did you study when you went to? Where did you go? To did you go to university or nope. college or? No, I went, I, went, I went to college, mm-hmm. uh, I did a National Diploma in Acting at Hartford Regional College, yeah. um, which, you know, I only, I only actually ended up going to college because, weirdly, this, this story links me and you as well. I don't know if you, Go know, on. I don't know if, you know if you were going to remember this. Go on. You, were, you had the hots for someone. <laughs> I've had the hots for quite a few people. <laughs> you had the hots for someone, right? Go on. You had the hots for someone, and me and you were out at Jumping Jacks. Yes. Yeah. Uh, There's a, probably a different person every week. <laughs> if I think, if I think back to Jumping Jack, I mean, days. I'm not going to lie to you. Like this, because you know, there was a period of time when me and you went to Jumping Jacks quite a lot. Yes, it was it very was. helpful for me because you were old, you were 18 and I was not. Right. Okay. So, so, so did I get you in? Well, we went in so, together. I mean, you, yeah, didn't, yeah. you didn't carry me in. But no, I mean, <laughs> no, you, but, you, you've but, always had yeah, this. I, well, I got in from 16 because I had the beard. Yeah, exactly. So, I, so at 16, I was like, yeah, I mean, like, and they wouldn't question it. Because of the beard. Yeah, yeah, and then I would go in with you and get yeah. in every week if I went yes. in with anyone else. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so good. whenever me and you went out, like, and we did that for a while, that was, mm-hmm. I mean, that would have been off the back of Dawn Treader, I would yes, have thought. Yeah, so early 2000s. Yeah, because yeah. then it was, we did stags and hens as well. Yes. But, um, but yeah, so like me and, anyway, me and you <laughs> were going to Jumping Jacks. I was going in illegally, but it was different time. It yeah, different it, was, it time. was different back then. They let me in. That's not. I didn't do <laughs> that's it. Not I, you, that's not that's on you. That's not on me. No, no, no. You let, let, and you were led astray by me. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You and Ian Green were <laughs> terrible, terrible influences. Um, but you were interested in a girl. I'm gonna just going to keep their names out of it. Right after this, we'll yeah, talk about yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> um, and you were interested in this girl. So we, like, so you were like chatting, her, like chatting to her, like whatever. And we, she was walking home. So we walked her home, right. which was literally the. Go other on, end of Harlow. I think I vaguely remember this. Carry on. Yeah, yeah. literally the other end of Harlow. Mm-hmm. So we were, uh, you know, and this is back in the day where you know money was tight. You were eighteen. You'd never get. You'd never get a cab. No, really. no. So we no, literally. So you know you had to I, do that journey back. Yeah, we had to walk all the way back. <laughs> yeah. and we were so far. Like we yeah. were at the Stowe. Yeah. So, oh, just so that you could like chat up this girl. <laughs> and anyway, I was anyway. So I was in the park with uh, her mate who was with a fellow and whatever. Anyway, so I was just you know mucking about with them just waiting for you to come back <laughs> anyway you came back and then i think we went out the next week anyway at some point during that conversation she had found out that i'd got an a star in, in drama mm-hmm. and i was just about to come out of like it was going into that period of going into college but i hadn't sort anything out i'm useless with that sort of stuff i'm like you know actually i'm dyslexic and dyspraxic but that didn't get diagnosed until i went to college mm-hmm. so that was, that was the same for me oh was it i'm dyslexic and, and so at the college like they never got seen at school no. All through school. In fact, at school, I was told I was slow. <laughs> that, that was like, I had an assessment at school, and the, the guy that assessed me he just basically went, Yeah, there's nothing wrong with you, you're just slow. And then, first week of college, they were like, You're dyslexic, aren't you? 
And I was like, no, I'm, I'm not. No, I'm, I'm just slow. <laughs> I'm just slow. But it, it's really bad, isn't that it? That is awful. Yeah, it's, it's, awful. it's bad. It's awful. Well, yeah, no, d- dyslexic as well. Yeah. So, and I think that's a trait of like creatives, especially within acting as well, it tends to be. It could be, yeah. yeah. I, I, I've never really, yeah, I've never really thought about it like that. Mm-hmm. I just, I just, yeah, it was the same, a similar thing, like, let me finish, let me finish, sorry, this, let me finish sorry, the story. I'm, I'm, I'm taking no, it off. No, it's my fault. I went off on a yeah, tangent. Yeah, yeah. Long story short, she found out that I had an, uh, an A star in drama and then she was like, what are you doing with it? I think this must be the next week when we, we went out again, mm-hmm. probably because you knew she was going to be out. <laughs> ben, do you want to come out? Just, yeah, I've, I nearly said her name then. Uh, and um, anyway, she got talking to me and was like, uh, Why, what are you going to do? You're going to go to college? I was like, I, I don't know. I haven't really done anything with it. It's like, she was doing musical theatre Mm-hmm. at the college in the year above so she was obviously because you're older than me so she was older mm-hmm. um so she was already a second year at, at college doing musical theater and she was like there's an acting course at this college she, i'm gonna i'm gonna talk to the tutor i was like whatever okay cool that'd be lovely thanks yeah. like someone's doing the work for me what ridiculous mm-hmm. classic me um and then yeah i got a phone call i got a phone call from the tutor saying like oh i've heard that it's just so weird. Like it's one of those things. It's like it's fate, though. I like I, yes, I kind of yeah. believe in fate because um, mm-hmm. he rang me up and was like, "Do you want to come in and like do an audition?" So I was like, "Yeah, yeah." Got on the wrong bus. Someone I met someone up the town and I said, "I've got to go to Hartford Regional." It's two Hartford Regional campuses, though. <laughs> is there? Yeah, I can't even remember where the other one is. Mm-hmm. But I said, "Oh, I've got I've got like a like a uh, I think it was like the first day of college, essentially." Mm-hmm. Um, so like up the town it's all the people from school because we've all left school and he's like some guy was like oh yeah I know where you have to get on this bus to go to Hartford Regional mm-hmm. cheers mate thank you obviously the internet doesn't exist we're old yeah the internet doesn't Free exist internet. yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't well, even I, had a, I would have had a mobile phone but I mean what but even is that the, yeah that's like text messaging yeah. that was like what am I going to do text the bloke that called me <laughs> yeah, saying exactly I, so I, I, I mm. thought I knew what bus to get on mm-hmm. but he was like no 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 you don't want to get on that that's not the right bus it's this bus got on that bus Said to the driver, look, I'm, I'm trying to get to Hartford Regional College. Like, can you just sort of give me a heads up? Because I don't know. You know. Again, no Google Maps. No, you know, I could have taken, I guess, an atlas, the, you know, the A8, A to Z thing. But yeah. anyway, not an atlas. That's yeah. mental. But, but you're um, discovering the world, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. Like, I've never been out of Ireland. No. Uh, so, yeah, turn up the wrong wrong campus, don't I? Oh, I go into, go in, literally go into the reception and go, hi, I'm here to see Darren Pierce. She's looking on our little system. Doesn't There's no da- no Darren Pierce. So like, what what you hear? Which course? It's like oh, it's the National Diploma in Acting. Ah, oh, that's at the Turnford campus. You're at the I don't know where. I think it's where somewhere around there. Right. Anyway, you need to get this bus and this bus. Don't worry, I'll phone through to let them know that you've. You're an idiot, essentially. I'm sure they had a lovely laugh about that. So then yeah, I turned up late. And I bet you're not the first, you probably won a week, they probably did. I would like to like, think so. I'd yeah. like to think I wasn't the only idiot that did that, but equally, probably. Yeah. yeah, and then eventually got in and then, yeah, t- turned up and had to do an audition in front of the entire class because I was late starting. So, like, rather than doing the audition mm-hmm. to one person with a, like a panel, I did it in front of the people that were already on the course, which is mildly intimidating. Yeah. Um, yeah, got a place on the course, but I only got that because me and you were really? up jumping jacks. How strange, isn't it? It's, it's strange. It's strange how things work, and it's strange how like just sometimes being out there makes things happen for you. Like you don't necessarily have to force things to happen, do you? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Be, I mean, being out there or just being out in a club, <laughs> drink, <laughs> underage drinking, uh, is yeah. what did it for me this time. Yeah, but but it worked. It, it, it did work. Yeah, but um, alas. You and the you and her never really. Uh, uh, well, I, I'm still eager to find out who this her is. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you yeah. didn't end up together, so yeah. it, you know, that wasn't your story. Right. That was all about me that night. Yeah. You were doing it for me. <laughs> I was doing it subconsciously. For you. you did yeah. you did me a solid there. So. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> well, I met the uh, you know the. And then what came of that? What came of college? Then did you come out of college with that kind of drive to? <laughs> what was the what was the what was the thing out of college? Because I know what I got from it. Uh. The thing I got, I I just had a, I had a really nice time at college. Did I, you? Yeah, I loved it. I loved yeah, yeah. it. Like it was like you know, I was doing I was literally solely at school. I was doing all the other subjects. But and then I, you and were I solely failed. concentrating. I came out of school with an A star in drama, and I think I got a, the next one was D in D in science, and then an E for English. That's how I like to say it. I got an E for English because it does begin with E. But yeah, it you know I mean I didn't even know E was an option, um, and then. Yeah, I didn't. I don't think I got any other GCSEs. Like, mm-hmm. I just wasn't. 
I'm not academic. No. That's just not. And, you know, it turns out mm-hmm. I was uh, dyslexic. But And I didn't necessarily think I was dyslexic. I did think it, things were more difficult for me than, mm-hmm. than people that were similar to me in every other way. And I was like... I don't think I'm that different to you, but yet you're just smashing this, and I this is meant that I can't deal with this. Mm. So, but equally, the thought of reaching out for help was terrifying because if I got diagnosed with something like that, I'd get additional help, and I saw how badly bullied those people were. Yeah, and I yeah. was like, I can't, I don't want to, I don't want to, I can't. Be you know, one of the. Be I like get, that. I have a, I, you mm. know, I got bullied anyway mm-hmm. by people from uh, in the year above. I, I. I didn't need to then get bullied by my own peers. Yes, yeah, you know, cool. and like you know, kids are savage, man. Yeah, like, it's and, horrible. And so it's, kids are kids are the worst, can't they? They can yeah, be horrible. The, the, so I'm like, I I don't want to be mm-hmm. picked on like these people. So I'm just gonna muddle through and just get on with it and yes, just yeah. you know play the fool, make mm-hmm. people laugh. You know, so yeah, and then that's what college gave me. Like because I was only doing something I enjoyed, the tutor said, doesn't make sense that you're not doing this right like why you know I know you know it you can talk to me about it so why can't you put it down on the page like and then he sent me for tests it turns out mm-hmm. it's something really interest, interesting there as well play the fool yeah would you cast clown yeah 100% yeah because obviously being on stage now you're you, the role is like you're the comic in the yeah. pantomime here how many years is that now it's a lot, isn't it? That's quite. quite <laughs> Are we talking ten? No, I don't think it's quite ten. Oh, it depends. I've been in the pantomime, so I've been. I wormed my way into them mm-hmm. after the, after the heartbreak of yes, year yeah. one in two thousand ten. I think the first time I was in one was two thousand and thirteen, mm-hmm. but I think I was a comic. I was like a kind of half comic in Peter Pan, which is two thousand sixteen. Yeah, you work your way up. You don't necessarily just get thrown into yeah. one of those leading roles like that, no. do, do they? So you've worked your way up. But so was that always? Because I saw, yeah, I saw you as two fronts when we were younger. I saw you as the the class clown type. You were really fun. Uh, you the, the you were a joke. You, a joke. You weren't a joke. <laughs> <laughs> you had the joke. It's not the first time I've been described as a joke, mate. So. You had you had the jokes. You're a laugh. You're a laugh. Thanks. That's that's a way to put that's it. You're always, nice. you're always fun and a laugh. Um, but yet you took everything really seriously and you was professional as well. So you had these two con- almost like contrasting personality skill sets going yeah on, I mean I don't think they have to be contrasting mm. I know what you I, I get what you mean like you know it's 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 just it's that it's that's sort of what I learned like I say from doing all the amateur theater at, at Vicky Hall was mm. was the, the when it's appropriate to you can have a joke and a laugh and make fun of something and when it's you need to concentrate and when you need to not push you know and just get on with the job sort of thing mm-hmm. but yeah like I've always I've always what I like Laughter is the the best thing. Like it's that's come from that comes from my family. I think mm-hmm. like inside theatre, outside theatre. Like we make light of a situation. There's no other way to get through it really. Like mm-hmm. you know, it's laughter is the best medicine. Like if, if it, it just you can make someone, you can literally turn someone's day around by making them laugh. And I just think that's such a powerful tool. And you know, I I, I there's not. I mean, you know, that's why I love doing the shows because mm-hmm. I get to make people laugh and that's yeah. that's so there's so much joy from that like it's yeah making people laugh's great like yeah. and yeah I, I i liked being the class clown it also helped detract from the fact that i found the work really difficult so i was like oh, I'm, i'll just i'll just make everyone laugh you carry on with the work and yeah yeah but yeah it's, it is yeah i do love it yeah no it, does it, wait, it does it take you back to when you were watching pantomimes when you were younger as well that that feeling that you had that escapism from the outside world, yeah. I mean, any any like that. I've I, I've gone to see theatre like because obviously my parents were in it mm-hmm. um, from such an early age, and like that, yeah, that sort of hour and a half where it's sort of like I also because you know, I enjoy going to the cinema as well, and it's that it's the same thing. It's like for this time, I am going to sit and I am going to be engrossed in this thing that I'm watching, and everything else melts away. Now, obviously. Mm-hmm. When you're a child, that's just because it's you know it's wonderful and what a, that's lovely to, to have that. And as you get older, like sometimes it's really necessary. Like you know, I've, as I get older, I find like getting old's hard. It's really hard. Like because mm. you have to think about like adult stuff, which is rubbish. Because mm. adult stuff is rubbish. Don't grow up. It's a trap. Um, 
Yeah, so like having that time just to go, cool, I'm not thinking about anything. My inner monologue is being shut down because I'm just being entertained by this thing that I'm watching. And like, and live theatre has just got that extra spice to it because mm -hmm. it's happening in front of you and it's you're open to things going wrong. Mm -hmm. um, not that you watch it hoping that because there's nothing worse. Uh, I can't stand watching... Unless it's a, like I say, unless it's a comedy or something where you can break the fourth wall, mm -hmm. there's nothing worse than watching someone go, oh my God, they've dried. And you can recognise it. I don't know if you can recognise it more, you know, because I have... Because we're part of, part of like the industry, part yeah. of the, we're part of the theatre scene that when yeah. you, yeah, when you see other actors, you, you just instinctively you know go, when something's not going right. And you just go, oh, or, I, or a technical blip yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. You know when a lighting cue yeah. or a sound cue hasn't gone right. Yeah. And you sit there cringing. Yeah. Or the microphones start crackling. Yeah, that, oh, that's one of the worst. It's, I feel like when yeah. the microphones start. Not and there's nothing you can do about it. No. it. It happens. It happens so easily. Mm -hmm. Like just the just the the jack coming out slightly, yes, or yeah. or a little kink in the in the in the mic, and it all of a sudden, or even just interference with the radio frequencies. We literally had that at mm -hmm. the weekend where we had 16 radio mics up there and 16 down here, no five down here, and they were yeah. they were too close together, so they bleed through. Like it's live theatre it's, yeah. it's part of the excitement it do you is, know what yeah. I mean like yeah. if you get to you know do a if it went perfectly every time would we would, we, would we actually do it yeah would we, would well, it'd, we, be <laughs> it'd be a film it'd be a film yeah but it? even like, then things like film yeah I guess a film yeah, but you, you can, can start, try and polish it off can't you you try can start and stop again obviously you mm. don't necessarily know in a film whether you've gone catastrophically wrong until you get it back in, and you're watching it back but like mm. if you know you've done something wrong if you've if you've got no, I, I misspoke there. Like, oh, I, I said that. Oh, I said, I said the wrong intonation. I want, you know, can we try that again? Great. You don't get that. Like in theatre, like yeah, yeah. if you do it wrong, and you could have delivered the same line mm -hmm. every day, but one day you just say it. Just it doesn't even. It's not even conscious. It just comes out slightly differently. You can't take it back. It's done. Mm. Like you've said it wrong. Like you've just got to get on with it and go to the next one. Now, as I say, because of the character that I play in pantomime, if it's wrong enough, I can draw attention to it. And I can say something about it and try and, you can play with that and, and try and make it funnier. Mm -hmm. Or I can draw attention to someone else getting their line wrong and make it funny. But again, I think there's a skill in that where you don't want to, sometimes you don't want to draw attention to a mistake because it's just not necessary. Does it ever happen intentionally? Does, do the mis are the mistakes ever are they ever like rehearsed are they ever sometimes because sometimes I know that you get you get sometimes actors that are looking for that they're looking to to throw things off to have that extra bit of excitement do you ever experience that within the pantomimes you do yeah like so sometimes like people like to see it go wrong at pantomime it's mm -hmm. part, I feel like now it's, it's now part, part of yeah it, it's now it? part this is what mm -hmm. I was sort of alluding to probably quite poorly earlier on with like my parents. There was, a, there was a way that it used to work and it's evolved and it's changed into yeah. something different and it is, now. And it's sort of, yeah, it's yeah. really different now. And like, mm -hmm. and, and the audience kind of want that mm -hmm. a little bit. And so, yeah, like, every, like one of the questions I get asked a lot afterwards is, oh, did that, uh, was that meant to happen? And that's yes. my least favourite question because mm -hmm. I would go, if, if someone asks me an honest question, I'll give them an honest answer. It was that meant to happen? No, yeah, that happens every night. Or no, that wasn't mm -hmm. meant to happen. If someone comes up to me and says, I was there the night that, and that happens every night, I won't ruin the magic for them. I'll just go, yeah, there, no, yeah, I, sometimes, yeah, I did, you, you just went wrong. Because why would I, why would I ruin it for yeah. them? They think they've seen something unique. Mm -hmm. So let them think that. They've had that, they, they feel that they've seen something special and that's lovely mm -hmm. and that's the whole point. And that's the, that's the skill of the people. Like there is no one better in the business at selling a fake laugh than Jimmy. The, the the guy that plays the the dame, yes, yeah. he is the king of the cod. Mm -hmm. Like so, it's like a cod laugh. Like if you if you if you you would be convinced he's laughing for real, mm -hmm. and he is he's just he's just pretending to laugh. It is unreal. He is so good at it. He will make you believe that it's he's found it hilarious when he has seen it fifty six times already. Really? Yeah, he's mm -hmm. he's. I've never met seen his his match for that. Like he's yeah. he's great. But yeah, sometimes it goes wrong for real, and. The biggest mistake you, I feel like people make, and I have made it, but I don't do it anymore because I've realised, is that you make a mistake and you go, oh, that went down really well, it was really funny. I'm going to do that again. You do it again, it's not funny. Never the same. Because mm -hmm. you, can't re, you can't recreate it in the same way. Mm -hmm. It's not being rehearsed properly. It's not. It's quite dangerous to do that as well, yeah. isn't it? 
Uh, depends on for the rest of the dangerous in the sense of for the rest of the show and depends everything on, depends on depends on what it is. But mm. like if it's like you know I drop I dropped a, a fake spanner mm. and I I did actually drop it and obviously it's made of foam so it bounced and yeah. you know I pretended it hurt my foot and that got a laugh because it was obviously fake and I was like, oh that'd be funny I tried to do it again it just it got nothing and I was like ah that's that was wrong just it didn't go wrong yeah. stick to what is stick what to what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, but I have the license to like try those things out because I'm always I I always, certainly with pantomime, I'm always trying to mine for laughs. Like I'm going, can I? How funny can we make this show? Mm -hmm. And then if I find something that's funny, it stays, and then it will never change because they go, cool, that they are enjoying that. That's all that matters. Cool. Can I make this line funnier? Nope. Can't, it doesn't matter what I do with it; it doesn't really get a laugh. Cool, just play it, just to get, just do it. Like, so you're always assessing the situation. You're, you're, 100%. and you're, you're. I think that's the beauty of a panto that it can, like you say, it's evolved over all the years, but you can continue to evolve it over one one show. Can't yeah, you? yeah, hundred percent. Like it, it, the the pantomime is different. Like my parents come and see it uh, on, on opening night. They see it on closing night, and they mm. see it uh, times in between, and it. it they say, oh, it's changed, oh, it's picked up. It's like any, any production, you get more comfortable with it, yes, so everyone's yeah. a little bit more mm -hmm. relaxed. So that's the first stage. But then yeah. it's like, it's just trying, it's just like, you know, there's done nothing worse than the, the last tech before we open a pantomime for the comic, like for the comic, for the dame, people that need reactive. Like I talk to the audience all the way through the show. I'm like, they kind of guide through it, mm -hmm. essentially, because everyone else is sort of just doing this plot. Because we're only really like you know normally the comic and the dame are so rarely in the version they're not really in the they're not characters that are in the versions that you would see in the Disney versions or the fairy tale they're added in mm. basically to be the audience friends and to be able to add the comedy and trying to perform jokes to people that have seen it now six or seven times and there's only eight people out there and you're going hello everybody and they're like hello and it's just like. It's draining because yeah, you've sure. got like you like you rightly said earlier about like just something as simple as being dressed as a mummy or or a troll or whatever it is and feeding off of that. Mm. That's feeding off I'm, that energy. Feed, I'm mm. getting nothing back. So you're trying to give them. This is what I'm going to do when we have an audience. But it's like it's so reactive. Mm. Do you know what I mean? If someone if something likes something, you can lean into it. If so, if they don't give you a reaction, you move on. And it's so hard. By the last tech, you're like. Oh my god, is this even funny? Oh my god, am I? The, I the, I'm the worst comic in the world. This is just, this is just awful. And then you get to opening night, and go, oh, okay, cool. They are laughing. It does work. Yeah, it yeah. is. It is okay. Great. Mm. But yeah, I mean, it's like everyone. Everyone doubts. You, know, you have those doubts when you're opening night. It's like, is this actually any good? Like, mm. is this funny? Like, is this the, is this the end you of the? You start run? to question it and start to question. You. Do you question yourself? Always, mm. always. Like, because you're super confident, obviously. Oh, I mean, you know, <laughs> doing, the, doing that role. Yeah, you're confident than the most. Would you say? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's not. I'm, that's that's the perception. What's the yeah, truth? Yeah, that's the No, I'm not a confident person. I I am like riddled with self doubt. But then that makes me strive to want to. Like, I don't. I, I never rest on my laurels. I just assume. I I, I will assume that the next one's going to be the failure. Mm -hmm. like, I've been lucky. Uh, lucky. You could say it's luck. Could say it's hard work or a bit of both but like I have I've had good reception for all the things that I have done but you're only as good as your last thing do you know what I mean so like if I go out and the next show I do is not well received then that's what those people are going to go away and oh, he's, mm -hmm. he's lost it do you know what I mean I'm I'm terrified of that you know letting people down you know not doing a good job because I, you know, because I enjoy it and I want to continue doing it, and I want to do a good job and I want to make people laugh and I want it to be enjoyable. But yeah, I, I will, I will stand in the wing and, you know, be terrified. And then if I get, you know, you want to get that laugh and you go, okay, cool. And then you start to believe in yourself and like, you know. But yeah, I, I'm assuming I'm assuming that there's a failure around the corner, so I work hard to push it around the other corner. Do you have any? Tell me a bit more about that working hard to push it to push that self doubt away. Uh, would, would where, you, where does it how do you do it how do you go from being stuck around the side of the stage worrying about walking out for a moment uh, having self doubt and then and then then what happens what do you do just you, you just sort of uh, what's the way better way of phrasing it uh, 
no guts, no glory, I guess, is, mm-hmm. is the little phrase that I nicked from Die Hard 3. <laughs> but that's, so, that's, yeah. that's no guts, no glory. You just go, yeah. look, I'm going to give everything I can. This is the best of me that I can give because I, I would hate to ever go out, do anything really, and not give everything. Mm-hmm. Like, that's such a horrible cliche. It sounds so... No, but it's, it's honest and it's true. So it's like, it sounds cliche, but well, that's, that's how it is. Yeah, the, the, yeah. like, you know, and I try and... Do, I, I want to do that in any aspect of life. It's not just performing, it's like working and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Just, I want to give the best version of what I can produce. I want to be the, the best at what I can... The, be, the best of my ability, because what you don't want to do is go out and go, I could have done that better. No, you always do that. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know any any actors that that come off stage and go, if I had another chance to do that show again, Mm -hmm. I would just change that and that, and that would actually be better. Even if you believe you gave a brilliant performance, you always believe you can do it better because that's like, I don't know, I just think that's common. But yeah, I just, I want to give out the best version of me forever. Mm -hmm. Um, But then there's always that, I don't know, there's just, Life gets like, I guess it's got worse as I got older, definitely. Like I never yeah, I, yeah. I used to I used to I've always had nerves mm-hmm. and I think like everyone says nerves are good and I've never really understood that as a, a phrase. Like I, 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 is it is it something to do with like channeling the nerves as like an energy a source of energy? Yeah, maybe, but I mean they're just unpleasant. <laughs> yeah. I've never understood it. It's yeah, such a yeah. stupid the, yeah. the only thing that annoys me more is the, the and I'm sure there's a reason for it, but like the phrase uh I don't want to teach you to suck eggs. Now, I don't know about you, I've got no idea how to suck an egg. <laughs> no. So I'd quite like someone to teach me. <laughs> Show to... you how to what? do it. I don't, I've never understood that phrase. It's such a silly phrase. It's probably, I've never, I've never bothered to Google the etymology of it, yeah. but it's just a silly phrase. Yeah. That's going to be this episode. Yeah. Well, I don't know <laughs> how to suck it. I don't know how to suck eggs. Yeah. Yeah. But it's such a weird phrase. Yeah. I don't want to teach you how to suck eggs, but well, please do. By all means, because mm. I haven't got a clue. Yeah. Would, do you just put the whole thing in? You, I, you're you, looking at me like you're, you're looking for the answers. I, I don't know. I haven't well, got either. Someone will know. Yeah, please put Write in, in the in. comments. Yeah, you know. put in the comments. <laughs> How do you suck an egg? Yeah. And why is that a phrase? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. But uh, I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, the nerves. The, yeah, like mm. I remember doing, uh, I did a one man show up in Theatre 2. Uh, it's called Bottleneck. Um, and that was. That was the most terrified I've ever been backstage. Mm-hmm. Like again, pantomime. I'm always I'm riddled with self. Like, oh, is this going to be the one that fails? Is this whatever? And mm-hmm. am I going to do a good job and all that stuff? You go out stage and you just give everything and it's great. But you've got people to bail you out. You've got duologues and stuff. Like yeah, I've yeah. always hated monologues because you're so lonely in them. People mm-hmm. love them because it. I guess because you yeah, I've seen some actors that sort of specialise in it and they go out and do just just that. And I considered it for a little while. I had a little, I had a, I was going to say a little period of time where I wasn't getting work, a long period of time where I wasn't getting work, but I still wanted to do the acting, and I, I was looking at that, I was like, so I just, I can't find a group to be part of, so I'd just go and do a one-man play, but then I was like, no. It's so like, lonely. Yeah. It is, it is, it is one of the most lonely experiences, I think, of, I mean, it was, it was great mm-hmm. to have completed it and to have done it, but, uh, it was so lonely, it, like, it just that, you know, you're backstage on your own, you've got no one to, like, talk to and keep me no. focused. And I, just, I remember before I went on stage, I remember seeing my uh, shirt, so I was wearing a, like a school shirt. I remember seeing it moving because my heartbeat was beating so hard because mm. I was so terrified. Because if you go wrong, there's no one to bail you out. No, I've no. bailed people out in, mm. in, in like, because like, again, this isn't, this isn't uh, even though it was breaking the fall because I was explaining it was a story, they often are because you're having to talk to mm. the audience. Uh, there's no one to bail you out if you go wrong. And I, I did try uh, in that first uh, that first opening monologue. I did, like, the, the lines just disappeared. But luckily, they went, they went, it wasn't very long. It felt like it was about an hour, mm-hmm. but it was probably about six seconds. Yeah. Where I was like, I don't know what the next line is. Mm. And I... I think I'm just gonna have to walk off stage. I've had that thought as well. And then just go and sob there. in the dressing room and just be a failure. Like, yeah. literally, I was like, oh my God. And then it just and came. Then it comes, and it? then bang, I was just, and then mm. it, I never looked back. I never thought about lines for the whole show because it was just, you'd done it so much. But yes, yeah. in that in that six seconds, mm-hmm. an hour's it worth. It feels of, like an eternity. Yeah, an it? hour's worth of thoughts yeah. go through your brain. Mm-hmm. And, you just, and, I, and I just sigh it, like, like it, no, like, 
often you come off and you say, oh, I did that wrong and everyone goes, oh, no one would have noticed. But honestly, I know that no one would have noticed because I sighed and I was meant to be a grumpy teenager. So I fling mm -hmm. my arms down on the floor and just made it like into what was, you know, a pause and mm -hmm. it worked with where the dialogue had finished and where the next line was. But in that moment, it could have gone. That could have been it. It could have been over. Like yeah. I could have just walked off, had to refund everyone. It would have been catastrophic, but like it just came. But it was, mm. it was terrifying. Terrifying. I've not done a one-man show since. <laughs> but is there something within the, the trusting in yourself when you just let go to it? When you just when you when you just trust the process? When you stop thinking, that's when it comes back. I don't even know. You don't know. I don't, I don't even know, know, mate. I don't even know. I'm not even going to pretend like I've got an no. answer to that. Like it, it, the line just came back into my head, yes. and I just went. But I, you know, I was genuinely thinking I'm going to leave the stage in a moment and I'm just going to walk backstage. And okay, so I'm going to reframe that then. It's less of a question, more of a statement. Maybe you should just trust yourself that you do know. Well, maybe. That but you do know that you've done, you've put in the work. Yeah. You've put in all the hours beforehand. Yeah. You've, re you've rehearsed it a million times. You don't actually need to think anymore. It's there. Yeah. But I mean, for a, for a split second, it really didn't feel like it was. Mm. But, but then I remember also then doing a two... Like, so I did a two-hander with Kirsty Bruff, but we did two. And I feel like I was more nervous even than that than I was when I did the one-man show. And I had someone, I had someone... And what, what, what was that then? What, what? I don't even know. I remember saying to, to Kirsty, because she'd also recently done a, a one-woman show, and I was like, are you, how are you feeling? Because I feel way more nervous, and I do not understand why. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, you know, two is quite a, you know, it's quite a famous show, mm -hmm. like in certain circles and it's lots of multi-rolling and stuff like that but I don't know I was just it's, I, it's definitely got worse I don't know Kirsty. she's someone you've worked with before you yeah. did you did gym show teachers teachers so, yeah. okay yes so she know, was yes. she was in teachers yeah. as well now teachers now I don't remember being I always nervous mm. I always get nervous but that there was something about that that was just it just felt it just felt a lot more calm I don't know yeah. if it was because there was three of us I don't know if it, I don't know what it was there, there was, I don't know if I just. I guess we can have these different feelings in different shows, can't we? And they don't have to always stick. You, you, like if you have a, a bad time with nerves, it doesn't have to stick. It yeah. doesn't have to pass yeah. on to the next one. Yeah, that's true. I don't know mm. what it was. I don't know. I mean, like we did teachers. Literally, was like one of the last shows that we it was at the Playhouse before it shut down because mm -hmm. of COVID. Yeah, that so was in 2020. We did that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yeah. like, it was nice to have got one in before yeah. it all went to pot. I actually that yeah that was the last piece of theatre that I I came to see was, oh, was, it? was teachers okay. and I I just dislocated my arm. Um, like, how? <laughs> don't ask how. I just don't, did. don't ask how. <laughs> right, I was laying on the bed with my arms, <laughs> laying on the bed with my arms like that, just stretched out in like this really weird position, right? Just laying on the bed, just stretched out. I'd like fl I just like threw myself down on the bed, and a cat jumped up on my back. <laughs> <laughs> like out of nowhere this cat jumped on my cat jumped, I was going to say this cat it was just a random cat, cat. <laughs> no my cat jumped on my back and made me jump and the way that I jumped I like sort of flipped myself but like pushed this arm like really really oddly on the bed that so oddly that it popped out through just jumping from being scared of the cat <laughs> so a cat, your cat dislocated your dislocated arm dislocated my arm yeah and so anyway the next night I was coming to see teachers and I was, I was a little bit off my face <laughs> <laughs> because I was desperate to come and see it because to support Jim, I had a fit, I had a sense of COVID. I had I had this feeling that something was coming. I was I was going down a bit of a rabbit hole. A right. Conspiracy. It was a really weird stage in my life. Okay. Early twenty twenty, I was going down a rabbit hole, and I had this this sense, this feeling that something was coming, and I was like, I just want to go out to the theatre. So I took tramadol. I took uh, I took drugs that weren't prescribed to me. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> um, and I just remember being there, a bit watching you and going, like watching the three of you and being just like in this space of like, wow, <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> Sounds like you're a bit yeah. high. Yeah, I was a little. Yeah, through pain, through painkillers. Um, 
but yeah, so yeah, going to the theatre high can be a, yeah. a bit of an experience in oh, itself. I mean, hopefully it made it better. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was ele- great. It was one of the it was one of the best theatre experience I've ever had. Oh, there you go. So. Wait, do it. Take tramadol. Go to the <laughs> no, theatre. No, don't take tramadol. Don't oh, take. We're not. We're no, not, no, that's no, not no, the message. No, that's not the message. That's not the title <laughs> of the podcast. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, no, no. no take tramadol. Go to theatre. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get prescribed tramadol if you need it. <laughs> I've never heard of it before. But tramadol. It's just a heavy painkiller. Like physically heavy or yeah like f- physically so and yeah and mentally <laughs> so uh, but that takes me on to covid actually because during covid during that time obviously we lost the thing that we love mm. for a period of time but the way that we lost it as well like it was everyone everyone lost something during yeah. that time everyone yeah. had things that they had and went and went through trauma and difficult time um but i remember seeing something from you that you posted on Facebook. You wrote a post about, about how you'd worked so hard on the oh, panto. Oh yeah, this was... And that, 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 that post really hit me. Like that really hit me about like the value of what this means to you. Mm. It was, it was, it was, oh, it was brutal. It was absolutely brutal. Just because we'd spent the whole year, we didn't know what was going on, we were closed down, we, you know. I remember, because uh, obviously we got, you know the way it wasn't dealt with very well. I didn't think because uh, obviously with that, you know. Well, there was this there was this line that everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine, but don't do too much. Yeah, and, then, do, and, but, then, and then it was like don't go don't go to public spaces, don't go to the theatre, mm-hmm. but not we are demanding that theatres shut. Yeah. So therefore, we had to clo- we had how, to can- how do these businesses continue? We had to cancel. We had to mm-hmm. cancel our shows for a period of time. So like you know, Rory. Um, so Rory's the. the general manager here uh, yes, is the art- artistic director mm-hmm. um that we have on an earlier episode there you go i'm yeah. sure he'll talk about it or maybe he doesn't i don't know yeah, i haven't yeah. heard it it's not out yet um, no it's not there um wait, it will be it will, will be so, so yeah, be, yeah hope you enjoyed yeah um but yeah so he so he uh, obviously had to cancel a, a period of sh- a shows but obviously like technically we weren't forced to be shut down but we had to disclose the doors because it was like well no one's going to come because they've just been told we shouldn't and it is it was starting to get scary um, so we were still coming into work, um, but obviously it was just you know I was in my office, uh, and then Rory and Emily were in their offices, and you know cause, and it, so everyone was sort of separate, but we were all still coming to work because it was still normal, wasn't it? Nothing was closed yes, down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I was I was here when it was me, Emily, and Rory were here, and we had the screen up in the bar, and we watched the announcement together, basically mm-hmm. saying like that's it, shut it all down. You you know you're done for, and I think it was. Only and there a, was still a hope. There yeah, was it was only a, a month, I think, at the time. It's a long mm. time ago. But anyway, so that was a weird feeling, just knowing, knowing that we were like, okay, so I, you know, I come here practically every day, and I see these people, and this is my life, and then all of a sudden, like 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 a lot of people, like you know, mm. there were a lot of people that worked all the way through. But anyway, so we went away. Anyway, difficult, difficult, and then as it sort of came out the other side, it was like, okay, we can, you can do theatre, but you have to hear all the rules. Mm-hmm. So we divided, we made it a business case to say, if we separate all the auditorium into groups and, and put enough distance and open all the doors up and stuff, like, can we make it work? How many seats can we sell? Can we make it financially viable? Yes, but we have to do, a, our cast has to be dramatically smaller and we have to tighten up, get less set and less crew. and. You know, really Log- logistically, yeah, it was um, a challenge. Wasn't yeah, it? and like because the decision was made late, like Dan and I had to write a show in in a month, which normally we spend a year writing mm-hmm. the pantomime. So like you know we 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 crammed that really hard, and like the rehearsal period was shorter because we had to pay. We couldn't afford to pay, pay people for a longer period because obviously we were going to make less money, and it was mm-hmm. like all these all these sort of things. And you know, and and then ah, oh, I, I mean I I still get emotional thinking about it. I was literally over in that wing there and hearing people like clapping to the overshore man it was just we, like, we were all like you know you try not to start crying because you're going we've got to go on in a minute and be mm-hmm. funny and stuff but like it was such a beautiful moment it was mm-hmm. so magical because it just this this venue had been dead for mm. months like you know we were shut down in what i mean we we pr- probably cancelled everything in right at the beginning of march before the actual mandate to shut down mm. so then april june july august september october november so like yeah what is that five six seven months it nothing no audience member no one like it was 
you know, and we I mean, we were having to come in, and we were doing, we had, you know, we had all the COVID tests. We had to come in. Mm-hmm. We were coming in separate, you know, to COVID tests. One, co- we all knew one COVID test would kill the whole show. Yes, yes. Uh, but you know, everyone, so hope was like that was non-existent, wasn't it? Like hope, yeah. like like it, it was all very daunting, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I mean, it was, it was, it was, and we were, and we were like, we were so lucky here that the Harlow Council really supported the Playhouse. Mm-hmm. Um, so no one, no one like lost their jobs. Like they paid our casuals, so that, so that they they got like money as well because you know so that you know because a lot of people left the industry because they had to. They had to, and then yes. what happened was is they left the the tech industry and performing industry. Found out actually that earning a regular income is quite nice, mm-hmm. and never came back. No, no. Um, and and a lot of the spaces didn't open again, did they? Yeah, there's a, there was a lot of that as yeah. well. But yeah, so we we got. We, we managed to open we were we were like and we were one of the lucky few even though then yeah, we did 10 days yeah I think it was 10 day or 10 shows I can't remember um, and then we had our day off and I remember people and I'm a glass half empty kind of guy I'm not gonna lie to you I like mm-hmm. I'm a assu- I assume the worst because I yeah. feel like my thing is I feel it prepares you for the worst even that's a pretty negative way to look at things but I, you know, unfortunately that's just how it is mm-hmm. But I remember standing on stage and people were going, oh, is this, do you think this is the last one? They're talking about Tyrion. I was like, no way. We're, we're fine. We're going we're gonna to go. Let's go out today. Let's, let's do what we do. Let's smash this. Now, think about this being the last one because it's not. We're going to come back on Thursday and we're going to go again and it's going to be absolutely fine. Yeah, that didn't happen. We were cancelled. We were shut down. Mm-hmm. All that hard work. like you know, all, And we'd just broken even. We literally just... Make it made it so that we hadn't lot made a loss, and mm-hmm. therefore, and people were starting to book up more because people had seen that we were open, and the people they had gone, people wanted to come out, people and, pe- wanted and to people be... had gone away and said, oh, "They've done it really safely. It's all yeah. like you're all separated, mm-hmm. and like it's all done properly, and everyone's wearing face coverings, and it's like you know we weren't going into like, all the things that we'd done. We'd done everything by the book to make people feel safe, and people were coming, and we, we were just about to start making money, and then." It was cut down, and it was it was it was it was heartbreaking, man. It was mm-hmm. absolutely heartbreaking. And you know, I came in to you know get all my stuff out of the dressing room, and I just had a little cry. I'm not gonna lie, like it just it just it just felt it was gut wrenching. We'd worked, yeah. we'd everyone had worked so hard, everyone had worked so hard to make that show happen, and people really really like it was really just it was just done. It was just lovely, but but we had to send shows, and there were some shows that had just finished their rehearsal period and were just about to open. And they didn't even get to do it in front of a show. So, you know, I have to just all I have to say is that we were lucky we, we got to do it. So, you know, but yeah, it was it was gut it was gut wrenching. So having the, the thing that you loved taken away from you like that, but and now you're back everything's back into full flow now and everything's back. How does does it do you feel any different now, having experienced that? It's weird, isn't it? Because like so that the next year it was still a bit COVIDy. Yes, it was yeah, still yeah. like, and and I ended up having to miss uh, oh, something like sixteen shows because I got COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, there was still a lot of the rules in place. Yes, yeah, it was like it was it was you still had to. You and still then had, there's still people with vulnerabilities. Yeah, and you got to protect. Fearful, you got to protect the rest. Of, like so, we lost. We lost like I think we lost ten shows. I was off for sixteen, um, and like you know, some absolute champions came in and just basically they did the show with three people covering the roles. But that was that was almost more heartbreaking to know that it was happening and I wasn't there even though I was pleased for the audiences I was pleased for the, the building because you know because it's you know at the end of the day it is a business and it mm-hmm. needs to make money so but I was that was horrible knowing it was going on and like you know I just I wanted to be there but the little lion said I couldn't be there and it, it couldn't I couldn't get rid of it no, no. like luckily I got a, I got a negative test in time to come back for the last show because mm-hmm. I think that would have that would have been too much for me to not have yeah, so. finished it. Mm-hmm. So again, the next year. So then that was so that was Robin Hood. And then the next year was Cinderella. Uh, I really appreciated it that year. Like I really appreciated like cool. Like, like I'm going to stay here no matter what. <laughs> yeah. Stay away from me. Everyone just stay away from me. Don't give me the logo. I don't mm-hmm. like because I mean that that was the frustrating thing. Is like you know in 2021 obviously. It was, I was still trying to, you know, I was still trying to stay away from people because I was like, mm-hmm. I don't want to risk getting COVID because I know that that means I can't go on. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's just one of those things, you know. Someone brought it into the building. Yeah, they, they had it. I was, 
close to yeah. them because you had to be close to people in the you know you can't you really can't do a show and that was the why it had such a detrimental effect you really you, can't do shows without being close to people it's mm -hmm. not really possible no. especially a pantomime yeah exactly yeah. Like, so but yeah it was yeah so yeah i do i do appreciate it but and i i i've appreciated it you've always loved I, it you've i have always like, felt, like, yeah. again i don't i don't want to sound like cliched or disingenuous but like it's a, I just think it's a blessing. I, I love that I get the opportunity to do it. Uh, you know, there are people much more talented than me that will never do it because of circumstances. Do you know what I mean? And I, I get the opportunity to come out on a stage mm -hmm. in my local town where I was raised, where I was born. Do you know what I mean? And perform and make people laugh. And I love that. And I, you know, and I get paid to do it. And that's just an added bonus. But I do it for free. Mm -hmm. I did it for free. Like I was, I did the pantomimes. On the way up to being the comic, I did I did them just for the my wage mm -hmm. that I hear, and I didn't get paid any extra to be a, in it and be an ASM. And you know, people were like going, "Oh, do you know what? That's that's taking the Mickey. That is because that's you know you're do, you're technically doing like three jobs there." And I'm like, I don't care. I get to be on stage, man. Yeah, it's like, beautiful, isn't yeah, it? Really? I like, yeah. I do this for free anyway. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I used to I used to do it for we used to do it together for free, mm -hmm. like. So it's a bonus. Getting paid is a bonus. Like it really is. Mm -hmm. And like you know, doing it here where I have history, where my family has history, is like that's just that it's, it's that little special. Do you yeah. know what I mean, I got married on this stage. So yeah, you did. I hear. I heard about. That. I saw all about that. Like that's that's a pretty amazing thing. Yeah. To get married on the on the stage. Yeah. It's. I mean, it was one of those. And things. you met your wife here. Yeah. Is that right. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah like yeah, it kind of follows on. Yeah. yeah. My parents met here. Then I met Emily here, and then we. We got married here. Wow, it's just got it's just it's just it holds a lot of meaning. This mm -hmm. this building, like you know, it, is it the building or is it the people? I mean, the, with with <laughs> the wrong people in here, yeah. like it can be it, like any building, it can be an unpleasant place to be. Mm -hmm. So like the building holds a special thing, but without the people that have been here, certainly in the last thirteen years while I've been on my journey, like yeah, it's all about the people. Like the thing is. It is about the people, but the the building will outlast those people. People come and go. Do you know what I mean? Like, and I will one day not be here for whatever reason, for good or bad. Do you know what I mean? Like, whether I, whatever reason, I, I won't be here because mm. I'll, you know, eventually I will die. I'm, I'm, I'm not immortal. <laughs> I'm not I'm immortal. Not, Sorry. Shit. Do you know what I mean? I'm hoping so, to find someone. Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> if you do, let me, let, I'd, I'd quite like some of that. Just yeah. just to stay young would be lovely. Yeah. But yeah, like so, the building will outlive us all. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the, the the people make any environment better, and like we are lucky here. We have there are some awesome people, and they've been, so Rory, Emily, and I sort of started our journey here at the same time. Like Rory has been working here since he was about six. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it feels like yes, yeah, yeah. Like, Which, was, he, this is what we went through the story of yeah. his, on, his, on his podcast. It's yeah, his journey of how he, yeah how he was here as a, as a young boy, yeah. helping out, volunteer backstage hand. And now he's the artistic director but of the who Amazing better, Journey. Who's better? Who's better placed than mm, exactly? That? Who's better mm. placed than that? Than someone who has been through every every path all the way to the top. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And like, so when I started, he he was a casual, but he was like sixteen years old. Like, mm -hmm. Was he even sixteen? He might be fifteen. I don't know. He was sixteen or fifteen when I met him. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was like, who is this kid? Like, because he knows loads like mm -hmm. i learned loads from rory like because yeah, yeah. he'd been working in theater you know i didn't know what anything was called mm -hmm. peter, peter loved to name things three times a round sling a strop and the there's another name for, a span set they're all the same thing there's no reason to call them three things <laughs> and what is that thing it's it it's, it's, it's a span set it's a it's, it's, a, span set. <laughs> it's a bit it's a, it's a bit of rigging equipment right okay uh which you can use on for all manner of things, but normally like you use it to to rig truss, mm -hmm. uh, but you can use it for other things. It's it's lifting equipment. It, like it, it's used in rigging, but it's why has it got three names? Why why has it got three names? It doesn't need three names. Kids have one name. Do you know what I mean? You could if someone can, can you go and get me a piece of DMX? You could come back now. I would say you'd come back with a bit of five pin DMX, but you if someone came back with a three pin XLR, that's acceptable because technically that is a bit of data cable that mm. does can trans can give DMX to a to a unit. So why again? Why? Give, like, <laughs> th don't, uh, why, why is it? Yeah, it's, yeah. As an XLR, you'd use it for a microphone, but now you mm. do get units that use it for DMX. So technically, that is a piece of DMX. It's not really, but 
Yeah. Do you ever find yourself when you're the, the actor within a pantomime and you've got all the technical stuff going on around you, do you ever find yourself getting involved with the technical stuff as well? I find it really... Or, or find it hard to stay out of that when they're clearly doing it wrong over there. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I mean, I, would, I wouldn't go as far as say that because that would indicate that... That they do it wrong. They do it wrong. <laughs> but, uh, oh, I find that really difficult. Mm. Uh, like, I feel like... I Eventually, I found I found it like I've tried to stay out of the way. Like so, like uh, so. Obviously, I run, I've, I've got a team here like Dave, Dave Monday, Will GD, Tom Sadler, Paul Finch. Give them a little shout out. They'll love that. <laughs> uh, so they're they're the full time technicians here. And so obviously, when I I go on sabbatical, basically, so I take unpaid leave to do the pantomime here. Right. Okay. So technically, like they kind of take off yes, a lot of yeah, my yeah. responsibilities and stuff. But like obviously, like. There is, if something goes wrong, mm. I want to get involved because it's it is my department. They are they are my team. Yes. yes. But equally, some like it's so hard because I'm not in community. I haven't got my com, I haven't got comms on. Yeah, so and, I don't. You, and you've got a job to concentrate on. Yeah. Being an actor. Yeah, absolutely. But equally, like you know, I don't know. There is, if I can help, mm -hmm. then I want to help. Like so, sometimes I feel like. I could, you know, and I, you know, I have done in times, I can't give an example, but like there's been times where I've been like, oh, actually, if you just do that, that will just, you could just do that there and that will solve that. Mm -hmm. But equally, like, like certainly last year, there was, there were things that were happening and it's just like, I don't have, I haven't got the, I'm not in it because I'm not, I'm doing another job mm -hmm. and they're more than capable of sorting it out. And they just got to sort of take your ego and go, unless they're asking you, they're probably all right. So actually, just leave them to do it because they're they're very good at what they do. I'm very lucky that I've got a really good team. I think that's the key there is ego management, isn't it? Yeah, like because you could very easily say, oh, "I know what to do." Yeah, I'm the technical it. manager here. Yeah. I outrank everyone. Mm -hmm. Like, but it's they're they're all they're all really talented. They all know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. That's why it. That is why I can go on sabbatical and, and leave them to it because they are good at what they do. So it is sometimes, it, but it's hard. It's really hard because you go, "This is you know, this is." Yeah. And sometimes I, you know, sometimes I do get involved, but only ever because I think I can help. If I, if I'm like, oh, I think they've got it, or like, you know, I'd, I'd like them to, because also that's that's how you learn as mm -hmm. well. Like, uh, that's how I learn. Things go wrong, I must solve problem. How did I solve the problem? Like this. All right. So next time it goes wrong, it's not as much of a problem because I solved it like that. Mm -hmm. But you don't. If someone else does it for you, you don't learn. So you know, it's also good in that regard. But equally, like you know, you don't want to see someone getting super stressed out. And like you know, where I can help. Yeah, of course, I look, you're I look. a good, you're a good team team player at yeah. the same time. So I want to help, but mm -hmm. equally, like you know, they don't need my help anymore. Like, <laughs> I've taught them everything I know now; they know more. So yeah, I, leave, good, good I lean on, I lean on them more than they that's lean on me. That's a good place to be. And what about so let's flip that around then, as an act, as a when when you're when you're doing the technical stuff, and you see the actors doing stuff. Do you ever do you ever get jealous? Of the actors on the stage, do you I ever think I'd rather be down there and than up up here? I don't think. Well, I don't know. I don't want to speak for anyone else, so I'll be careful. A hundred percent. I I would I I struggle to watch any piece of theatre or like anything that I think I can do without wanting to go. I want to be up there. Mm -hmm. and, and, not, and it is the same when it looks fun as well. Yeah, and they course. look like they're having a great time. Yeah. Like, yeah. I would never watch, like, I would never go to a, like a West End musical, say for example, and go, oh, I, I want to do that because I can't sing. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not going to be able to do that. I physically can't do what they do. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I don't know, it's not as the same. But yeah, when I see like a, 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 a piece of theatre and it's just a, a, a show and I'm like, oh, I'd love to be that, that, you know, of course there's a bit of jealousy because you're like, I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to be in that. I want to be in the play that goes wrong. That looks like great fun yeah do you know what i mean i could do that i'm definitely i i believe that i have the talent to do that mm -hmm. you know but it doesn't mean i don't enjoy it or anything like that i just like you yeah, there is that bit i always yeah. do it. and like you know working here i go oh yeah that looks fun. i would i want to be on stage but i'm not so i just got to go over myself and just go come on there you go yeah ego management yeah. Again, isn't it there's nothing i can do about it, it. yeah i can't just burst yeah, on there burst <laughs> go, no you're not going on for yeah. this bit i'm doing this bit yeah what about doing uh, acting professionally? Have you ever sought, sought that out, or are you very content with what you're doing at the moment? Uh, no, sorry to say, like that's bad, isn't it? Say professionally, outside of. Well, I get paid to do you it. Do, you so are a professional, so, so Ben. Professional. Ben, sorry, you are a professional. Uh, <laughs> I don't feel like. Well, it's just, no, I say it in that way because I, like, I feel like I know you, so I feel like yeah. I'm just coming across quite casual. But 
with with that sense of do you ever feel like you want to go further than this place do you do you see yourself ever moving on from here of course like of course this is my home like it feels like my home uh i feel at home here i love being here um but the ultimate you know as at the beginning of the conversation i've always wanted to be an actor like that's always what i've wanted to do like, i i really enjoy writing i really enjoy i've got, I've, uh, I've actually found that i quite enjoy that mm -hmm. but i'll never not want to like, even if i pursue a career in writing and i do more writing and stuff like that I'll never not want to act. I'll never not want to perform. Like, uh, even if my life doesn't take that uh, take that course and whatever, I'll probably go and join an amateur theatre company and, and as act. long as you're doing it. I just want to act. I, I enjoy it. Like mm -hmm. it's it's not slipping in. Like slip, uh, the, the, yeah, the dream would be to yeah to be in films and and theatre shows and and you know be a serial killer and be murdered and. Uh, and uh, be anything, a clown, uh, uh, a pirate, you know, a, mm -hmm. a, a lawyer. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's the dream. I cannot be a pirate because I don't like the ocean and there's not much in it for it being a pirate these days. Like, I can't. But like you're about to be a pirate. That is true. That is true. But I'm yeah. pretending to be a pirate. Yes. But I can never be a real pirate. So there it is. That's, the, that's what, brilliant. I get to be a pirate. I'd mm -hmm. love to be a lawyer. I'd love to be a lawyer and be, do that big old court. I don't think they're actually as fun as they make them look, <laughs> but I'd love to, to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's what acting allows you to do. You get to walk in someone's shoes that you'll never get to actually do in your real life because of, you know, got to go to law school and then that's, I don't want to be a lawyer that much. No, but you want to be, you want to be a lawyer to the extent of playing a lawyer. I want to taste it. I want to taste a little, little bit and go, oh, that's nice, yeah. Yeah, I've done that. Yeah. Now I want to drive a boat. Uh, mm. Do you drive a boat? I've, I've, I've driven a boat, I think. Do you drive a boat? Yeah, I think you drive a boat. Never really given that any thought. Cruise a boat? You steer a boat. Steer a boat, yeah. yeah but you, sail a boat. You steer a car, sail, maybe you sail it. Yeah, but then that's a sailboat, it hasn't got an engine. So yeah, what do you, so call do you one drive with, one with an outboard? What do you call one with an engine? I think you drive a boat. Drive a boat. We're upsetting yeah. a lot of people. <laughs> who are like, you don't drive boats, you <laughs> sail them, you cretins. No, no, but you sail. If there's a sail, you wouldn't sail one with a with an engine, that's would you? Point. The sail is to do with I, the... So I, I, if it's got a steering wheel, you drive it. Because the driving isn't necessarily saying you're on a road, is it? It's saying you're... That's true. Yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. I never I didn't think we were going to go to boat, <laughs> boats, but, you know. But that's, yeah. Mm. I, I want yeah, I want to perform and... You know, this it gives me an opportunity to do it here, and and I love it, and I love performing here. Performing here is special, but obviously, like Treasure Island, mm -hmm. uh, that goes out uh, uh, to theatres all across. So you're about to go on a tour. Yeah. Mm. Um, so that's that. It's, it almost sounds to me like you're kind of living the dream in some sense. Yeah. You're doing you're doing the play. You you're not you're not just here, are you? You're going no. to other theatres. No, around, going all over uh, the UK. You're yeah. going all around the UK as well. So that but I say UK. We're we're, we're England. England. We're not going to Scotland or Wales, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. All right, okay. But still yeah. a tour. Still, it's, oh still yeah, it's going. Tour. It's going about as far. We're out to Middlesbrough. It's very yeah, close to Scotland. Yeah. Scotland so. yeah, unless you lived in Middlesbrough, and then you probably say it's nowhere near. Oh, of course. <laughs> but I mean, for me, it's but for us. It's down nice. in the, for down in the if you're living in the south, if yeah. you're a southerner, then yeah, then, then yeah, yeah that it's is basically in, Scotland. Yeah, so I'm going to upset some people. You definitely are. Yeah, but I'm not saying it's in Scotland. I'm saying it's very close. Yes, I I understand, but others wouldn't. Well, I'm very sorry. Yes. I mean, no, no shame. So you 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 live. You are in a sense living the dream. Hundred percent. You're getting to do all of these, all 100%. of these things. You're making a living from it. Yeah. Professional. You're a professional uh, at actor times, yeah. at time. I'm a professional actor for yeah. two time, two periods a year. But but that's more than more than more than, as, more as than, I say, mo more are, than most that call themselves an actor. And there and there are mm -hmm. there are people that are so much more talented than me who don't get to do half half as much as that because because of reasons, because they haven't walked into the right room and they haven't been seen by the right people because, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? So so I consider myself so lucky to be able to do that and, it is, and it's brilliant to be able to do it all over the country and like, I'm not necessarily thinking that when I'm unloading the van, you know, going up the staircase uh, that's winding with a big large flat, but mm -hmm. it's still living the dream, like it's still, it's still wonderful, like, and again, I've been really lucky because the, the people, the person, so I started writing the pantomime in 2018 with Dan, who has a company called KD Theatre Productions, and he's the person who does the tour, 
And again, it was all happenstance that that even came about. So again, it's, it's that little bit of luck. This is what I'm saying. That there's loads of talented people there that just haven't had that bit of luck, which meant that they then gave up because they didn't get the luck and they needed to do something else. Mm -hmm. And I've just had, I have had the bits of luck that you need, you need them. Like, I don't think, unless you are born into it, unless your parents are, you know, I know that we've spoken about, but my parents did, you know, community theater, amateur theater. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I came into that theater. Like, it's exa exactly the same, but only if they were mm. Hollywood A-listers, then you get Hollywood A-lister opportunities. Do you know what I mean? Like, yes, yeah. So unless you have that avenue, you need a little bit of luck. You need a little bit of luck. And I've had that a lot. So I met Dan. Dan was doing an, uh, an Easter tour. The person paying his scarecrow couldn't do, commit to the dates because of COVID. Again, because COVID happened. And so the dates changed because obviously then the tour went out in 2021. And I just had a conversation with him and said, I was like, well, well, one day you can, I'll be, I can be able to go on the road with you. And then he just went, do you want to come and play Scarecrow? I need someone to play Scarecrow. And I was like, yeah, that's absolutely, that I said, um, sounds great. And then, you know, went out last year in Goldilocks and I co-wrote Goldilocks with him as so well. So how did, how did this come about? So we mentioned earlier on that you're dyslexic. Yeah. So writing is a, is the, one of the most difficult things you can do as a yeah. dyslexic. So how does, how does that work for you? Uh, it's a lot of spell check. <laughs> <laughs> like, again, it's that thing, isn't it? Like, it's, it's, it works up here. Mm -hmm. It's just getting it down there, and it just takes more time. Do you know what I mean? It's not as it's you know that. It just means I have to spend more time on it than someone who doesn't have that struggle. Mm -hmm. But like, I know what I want to say, and I know what it want. I want it to say on the page. And like again, Dan is you know so he's the person having person. someone to work with. Yeah, with. that's it's, it's, yeah, it's massive mm -hmm. for me because like. You know, I I read something and it makes perfect sense, but actually, loads of the words are the wrong way around. But he knows what I mean because when I because we read through it together and I read it out how it should be, and he just I think a lot of the time without even me even saying anything, he just goes, hey, he means that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like, mm. I know what I mean. The words are there; they're just not necessarily always in the right order. Mm. But um, but yeah, that's that's you know. So I, having someone to work with that makes a massive difference. But I mean. You know, even if I was to write something on my own, like I, I, Emily, my wife is super bright, so I would just be like, "Can you make sense of this?" <laughs> and she would. Um, yeah. Again, I'm lucky that you've I got have, the, you've I've got, got, got someone you've got, like that. Yeah, that you've got the right people around you as well. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I, I, I fate. Do you know what I mean? Like luck and fate. I think mm -hmm. the two things that I, you know, they're they're kind of the same thing in a way. But like, you know, I feel lucky to have met uh, Emily. Like. Uh, when I did and and that we you know we had a friendship for a few years before we got married which became the bedrock of our which we you know we nurtured here because we were here you know working till whatever time in the morning like you know chatting on cans and stuff like just talking to each other and like you know all of those things it's all luck it's all it all came it all came from here everything so far in my that's been super positive in my life has come from this building mm -hmm. like this place gives so much to so many, doesn't it? Yeah, I, um, I think so. Like the, the amount of people that have gone on to do brilliant things uh, from here, I think it's great. Like, and yeah. They've gone on to do brilliant things or had brilliant lives. Mm. Like even if you take away all the, the acting and the theatre stuff, all the relationships, Yeah. the relationship of your mum and dad, yeah. the relationship of you and your wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. The relationship with all, your, all the friend, friendship groups that you've yeah. made. Exactly, and like uh, all of, like you know, I, I meant we mentioned some names earlier. When we were talking about Vicky Hall, but like friendships were formed here. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like same that they would be in in any communal space that it gets people together, but like they're still friends now. Do you know yes, what I mean? Yeah. Like people that made made their made their friendships here forever, mm -hmm. forever friends. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, and you know, it just as I say, all of the all of the excellent things that I've. I've been able to experience in my life so many of them have been because i came to work here like obviously i my parents forced me to come here and i'm not gonna lie they, yes, we yeah. need an eight-year-old for this show don't worry we have we one, have one. <laughs> you'll say these lines and you'll do it you know but yeah, uh yeah. you know since then like you know the playhouse has been pivotal in my life really so it's, mm. it's been pretty great what would you say when anyone ever says anything about you know We'll get onto politics a little bit here. Oh. When they go, there's not much value within a space like this. But why should the, why should the local council continue putting all this money into somewhere like this when they need to fill in the potholes? I would say they've probably never been here. 
is my honest answer, or uh, that they don't, they've only come to see a random show, possibly, because they the built like especially, and I've watched this grow, and I feel like Rory has been a very big part of this. Um, it's, the, the Playhouse has been on like a lot of journeys, and like, I, I don't mm -hmm. want to speak about some of it because I don't know. I wasn't. I was down the Vicky Hall with you. Yeah, or, like, or we was like eight we years were, old at the and time. I, and and yeah, I was. Oh, and I was, and yeah. I was brought up to like, oh, the Playhouse. Oh, oh really? Not not brought up, no, but like but there was like, a there was a vibe. Yeah, like, was it? No one ever said that to me. Like, mm -hmm. Let me let me rephrase that. But like, when we were when it, I feel like there was there was animosity towards the Playhouse with some of the people at Vicky Hall. Like, I don't know if that, how true that is. I was a child. Yes, I was picking yeah. up on a vibe, mm -hmm. but it was very much like we're over here and we're over here. Yes. And this is, these, we are two separate entities, very, very much so. Mm -hmm. So like, I was like, oh well, you know, we don't have, we don't do anything at the playhouse, so I have no association with it. Yeah. Like, I, I did things there back in the day yeah. when I was. Like, the last thing I did here was when I was twelve, before I came back when I was twenty three mm -hmm. to work here. Um, so, but like, so there was there was always that. But so I don't know. I don't know. We don't know the history. I don't know the history. No, I don't know what happened, and I yeah. don't know. You know, it's it's you know, it's, it's history. It's yeah. politics as well. Yes, like, yeah. I'm sure there would be all kinds of things with it, and the people that were here and they upset this person. Mm. But like, so when I came in, there was that. There was like the dregs of that was still about. Um, like there was there was no there was no uh, amateur theatre in here at all. Mm -hmm. um, there weren't like there were empty spaces and stuff like that. Like from there, going 13 years forward, there's so much more happening here. Mm. There's support for young people who want to get into theatre, like there's a Young Practitioners Project, uh, you know, the, the, we do, um, like, there's like, regular things now, we do like Celebrate Harlow, the Chairs Live Lounge was this year, like, things where people, giving people opportunity to perform, like we have Live Wire here, which is a free, um, uh, like, free theatre, they do dance, drama and, and band, so and that's completely free. Obviously, like they existed before the Playhouse. Don't get me wrong, but we yes. offer them the space, a space to, 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 exist to, to and, do it and yeah. and to do it. So, you know, we we work with them. Obviously, you've got you've got like hip hop, pop. You've got Harlow ballet. You've got uh, hats. Uh, we're talking we're talking almost hundreds of groups, but thousands of people. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, and 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 there's 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 going to be ones I've missed. So apologies if people are listening. Because there's so, because there's so many. Raise roof. That's another yeah, one. Yeah, there's so many working. groups are active in here now. And there was there was a little quiet, quiet period here, wasn't yeah. there? there was Whereas a, now it's it's not quiet here. No. Like this moment we're getting here right yeah. now is quiet. It's nice. Quite, quite I like, rare. I like it. When <laughs> you it's, like it because yeah, it's, it's, like, just cause it's quiet <laughs> because it is it's, it's busy and mm. that's but it's what that's how it should be because it is. It is funded by the taxpayer. Yes. Um, but you know, so there should be that we are community. We should be about the community because mm. we we die without them because mm -hmm. there's four hundred seats that have. And to be what filled. is this place without people? Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's an empty. I know what it's like without it. It's mm. it's it's an empty shell. It's lonely. It's it's sad. I was here like you know I had to come in and do like like testing, water testing and stuff like through COVID and just an empty broke like shell of a building. It's just it's soulless. The people mm. are what make it. People that work here, the people that come in and do stuff. Do you know what I mean? We have like Senior Safe and Social, which is a, a, a again, it's a group. Uh, I think it's run by Rainbow Services. Apologies if I've got any of these names wrong. Don't, don't. I do backstage. You're not, you're not the official. I do, I, yeah, I do backstage. It's all right. We're already got it. Right. Okay, good. Um, but like again, like you know, so a place for people who are older mm -hmm. to come and hang out with other people that are in similar circ circumstances. I think that's worth funding, if I'm honest. Do you know what I mean? Like, we, we you know, the bar is open. Um, you know, we, we do things with so many outreach things, like we support so many different things. I'm so you're bringing all these people in, all these groups. What, what is the output to the community? So everyone comes in, but what's going outwards? Well, I, I mean, again, it's not my, uh, not my expertise, but mm -hmm. I mean, we, we go out and support lots of different things. Do you know what I mean? Like we, we've, we, we've, Went out to sort out the um, oh god, what's it? I don't want to get again. I don't want to get it wrong. It was no the, one's tested you. <laughs> <laughs> it was You're the Holoc get Holocaust out. Memorial Service that mm -hmm. was over at the Civic Centre, and so we had to go and, and raise roof did a performance. So we had to take over some PA and and stuff like that, and we go over and do things over at the town park, and yeah. you know, uh, you know, we support different people in different ways. You know, you're actively bringing this town to life. 
Is how I see it. But that's that's that's. I mean, I'm great. Great. I'm glad. That's yeah. Great. From from you just mentioned the town park there. Uh, last year was the. I think it was the first time the band's done kind of reopened. Is it the great to young, get together? Yeah. The yeah. young to like younger performers. Yeah. Uh, and it was it was packed with thousands of people and young performers up on the stage playing their, their instruments with the playhouse there, supporting them mm. with the sound and the lights. And that, that, that wouldn't be going on without the support of the playhouse. Yeah, the, and how that resonates for all of them young performers up on that stage there and the crowd, it, it almost can't be measured, can it? Yeah, but it's, it's, it's about opportunity, isn't it? Like, it's giving people opportunity. It's about, the, like, you've got to think about the next generation as well. Like, you know, and I, I, obviously we spoke earlier about going out and drinking. Mm -hmm. that's what we used to get up to as youth yes yeah but like there's just there i feel like there's less to do for younger people it's, mm -hmm. it's there's a lot I, harlow used to have like a lot of i could guys have a nightlife obviously like you know we probably shouldn't have been going out when we were <laughs> well, you were all right um you just dragged <laughs> me I was, I was calling, yeah being a bad but, like there's, the, you, there's, but... The, there's less to do and like so like it's nice to see young people coming in to the building and like being able to support them out and stuff. And I say it's not something I have like I sort of supporting. Oh, we're we're supporting these these guys doing this with you know this technical support, and then I that's when I get involved. So this isn't really my remit, mm -hmm. but like I am pleased that it's being seen by other people as a positive in the community mm -hmm. that we are doing. You know, because it is easy from the outside looking in to go, well, why do why do they get the funding from the council like what do they even do yeah if you're not but then it's so easy to miss what miss sometimes miss what's happening yeah i sometimes say to that try and imagine a world without all of them things going on yeah what would what would this town look like without those events like those bandstand events without the pantomime here yeah but the things what would what would what what would we how, how gray would this town look well i this yeah i mean <laughs> this know? is this is the thing isn't it and like you know without like you know, because you have Vicky Hall, and you've, we're lucky we've got two theatre spaces in Harlow. We're not a big town, no. you know, and like there are two spaces in Harlow where you could go and see theatre, you could go and see shows for children, for adults, for, and also you could be in things. Do you know what I mean? Like you know, yeah. So you can actively be part. You don't have to just be entertained. Yeah, you can be a participant. Exactly, mm. exactly. Like you know, that's that's what it's that's what it's. That's what this industry is meant to be like, and we're a community theatre. We are, you know, we do professional shows, which because originally when it was set up, obviously it was a, it was a community space. It, it wasn't, it didn't have like, to my knowledge, again, I wasn't alive, mm -hmm. but like, you know, it, it it was about the amateur companies being in here primarily, and obviously the pantomime used to be done in house and stuff. But like, you know, unfortunately, times change, finances change, funding changes, so it's now. But we do. We took them. We took it back in house, rather mm. than someone who doesn't know Harlow, who doesn't care about the building, bringing a show in. We tried that for a few years, and it never worked. No. It was always better when we did it in house with the people that are here all year that mm -hmm. care about it, are passionate about putting on a good show. In it, and I feel like it gets reflected in the in the actual show itself. It definitely does. So, but yeah, it does. So good stuff. So that's. Tell me a little bit about the panto that you're about to take on tour, like a little plug for that. What, what's happening with this? Uh, so it's Treasure Island mm -hmm. and your Silly Billy Bones? Yeah, Silly Billy Bones. I mean, <laughs> So I, you always Silly Billy. Is that like your, is that who you are? Silly yeah, Billy so, uh, so when I first started, I was like, I was Smee. And, I, and I, that, was the, that was the year that I kind of, it was, I, we, I didn't write it. Mm -hmm. It was, um, and I was asked to be in it and I was very honored and it was, you know, it was great. And so it was like, but I wasn't like a full comic as I, as I, think as you comic, are now, yeah, as I am now. Mm -hmm. um, and then the following year, I was asked to, to co-write with um, Dan, which I was a bit like, really, you want me to, you want me to write it? I tried mm. to talk, really, I tried to talk Rory out of it. <laughs> uh, anyway, long story short, uh, I said yes. I'm very, very grateful I did. It's a very stupid thing I tried to do, uh, talking him out of it, really. Uh, and yeah, and then so then I became like but a no comic. guts, no glory. Yeah, no right. guts, no, yeah, no guts, no glory. Exactly, and I had, it's about having that little bit of faith in yourself. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, and I you know working with Dan really helped because obviously I'd never properly written. I'd written stuff, but like nothing. Didn't do anything with it. It was just stuff that I'd written for my own mm -hmm. amusement. Uh, and then you know so that he he really helped me with that. Um, 
And then, yeah, so I can't remember the original question. I've gone off. So we're, we're talking about going on to Treasure Island. Oh, and no, Silly Billy. And Silly, silly, billy. silly billy. billy. Yeah, so then I was, yeah. so I was wishy-washy. Mm -hmm. And then the next year I was Silly Billy. And then I found that people were calling me Silly Billy. Like, oh, you're Silly Billy, you're Silly Billy. Remember me as Silly Billy. And then we did uh, Treasure Island mm -hmm. and I was Silly Billy again. Uh, which is the tre which is the show that uh, obviously got cancelled because of COVID, and then I just felt like it was less confusing for the kids, like that I, I they obviously I don't know I just yeah uh, my God this is the most long winded answer to it <laughs> simple question like yes I always try and yes. I now always try and find the way I didn't originally but now I always try and find the way to be silly Billy is like. He's, so, he's your core. He's your core. It's my brand essentially, yes, like yeah. as in like I'm silly Billy. Mm -hmm whatever do you know what i mean yes. like last year and that takes me back to how i kind of introduced you at the beginning of this as this almost like the most famous actor in the town you are no like you like i say being on the petrol pumps being on the bench yeah. you're out there for some of the especially for the younger kids that enjoy a pantomime and the families that enjoy a pantomime yeah you're you're known as silly billy yeah um in fact if you go on tiktok you can put in silly billy harlow pantomime and some clips of you come up. Do they? Yeah, you're on TikTok. Wow. Well, because 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 kids have shared it. Kids oh. have been like, oh, we like we like this guy that we come back and see him every year. He's silly Billy. Oh, I have so you're, not, yeah. So you're known. Not. It resonates. You're known within the wider nice. community as silly Billy. That's nice. Mm. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I, it, it's I like yeah. It's nice. It's mm -hmm. and I think I it, I feel I don't know why. Maybe it's stupid, but like I feel like it just it. It's consistency for the younger audience. I mean, again, eventually they'll outgrow it, but you know, it's like he, this guy's silly Billy. Like we know him as yeah, silly but what Billy. What happens when they grow it? They then bring their kids. In theory, I yeah. mean, you <laughs> if know, you're still around, if I'm still going, yeah, it's quite a lot of it's quite a lot of energy. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I, I keep it. I try and keep it silly Billy. Is mm -hmm. there is the very short yes. answer to the <laughs> long-winded version I just gave? But, um, so you're keeping it silly Billy. Yeah, it's a you're silly Billy Bones. Silly Billy Bones. You're in Treasure Island. You're in Treasure Island. Mm -hmm. Mother, uh, son of sons of Betty Blackbeard. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's just more carnage and just more silliness. Like it's mm. it's a it's a take on Treasure Island. It's uh, we've used some of the story from when we did it in uh, 2020 because obviously I, I think only something like 800 people saw only got to see it. So. Were, well, that's the beautiful thing with theatre, that you can redo it and you're getting a new, brand new audience, aren't you? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, we, and you're putting new spins on it and mm -hmm. we're having to change it because obviously the cast is different and you know the scale is different because it's got to go into a van and be tour around the country. So obviously at Christmas, yeah. we throw bells and whistles and everything at, at the pantomime here. We, mm -hmm. we aspire to be bigger than our, you know, our auditorium. Like when I feel like one of the things that we take the biggest pride in is people come and go oh wow that is more than what I expected for a 400 seat pantomime like mm. because we want to aspire to be the best do you know what I mean we want to be compared to the Palladium because that's the highest value pantomime in the country mm -hmm. do you know what I mean like that or maybe the Hippodrome they're the two biggest uh, pantomimes in the country right there. Yeah, sure. so they're the that's what you want to you, what, why would, you not, why would you not aim because of their strategic location they are, yeah, they're the two biggest two, and their reputation. Reputation, and, tradition, and they've got the and the, the, and the size the, of the auditorium yeah. means that the finances money, they who can they can bring back, into it, and they can put money back into it mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Now we don't have that here, no, sir. but that's what we're aspiring to. Because mm -hmm. why would you aspire to be? Oh, we want to be as good as a six hundred seat venue. Well, no, we want to be as big as the best venue. Yes, that's what we're aspiring to. Obviously, we can't we can't match them because mm -hmm. they don't have they have the budget that we don't have but yeah. anyway again I've so, got so when, when you come back to now taking it on tour you can't quite do those yeah. huge expectational no, we, things can just, you it's just not possible no. because like it's, say, got, it's got to go in a van it's got to go in a couple of vans and then drive yeah. up to Middlesbrough which is near Scotland <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not uh Oh, it's nearish. Yeah, for us. It's, it's close. It's yeah. close. It's yeah. pretty close. Yeah. You, oh, might, you might even go on a day, a day tour. Why uh, not? <laughs> probably won't. I think we've got to go somewhere else afterwards. But yeah, yeah like, so it's got to go into a vet. So the, 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 the production values, although the values at heart mm -hmm. have, are, are all the same, because it's the same, it's me and Dan, the same people that write Panto are writing this. Yeah. It's not the same, uh, it's, it hasn't got the same budget. Because it can't have because mm -hmm. it, you know it's not it's not doing 56 shows yes. in a 400 seat venue it's traveling all over the mm -hmm. country you've got to pay this 
it's, there's extra cost. Yeah, on getting the weeds. Is, this is really boring, but, but that is that is the, it, that is the truth. Yeah, it's the truth of it, and it's it. Do you know what? Some people might be listening to this because they're interested to find out how you do take a show like that's big here on tour. Yeah, but and you the, do have to it, you have to downscale the production. Yeah, it's not possible to take something that big. I mean, it's possible, but you but not at cost. No, not at, you, you're no. talking about you know to take say for example we were like all right we're going to take the Harlow Playhouse Christmas Panto on tour. Mm -hmm. You're talking about two Arctic lorries. Yes, yeah. And a team of like this you know, seven, eight crew, mm -hmm. and 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 do you know what I mean? And yes, it's just yeah. that's that the money that you'd have to make back mm -hmm. is huge. How do you how do your audiences respond to these smaller scale tours? Then? Oh, they, the same. Do they respond? The they same. respond any differently? No, they're exactly the same. Like you know, like based on the two years that we've had doing Wizard of Oz and Goldust, and we do try and make like, and we've had, you know we've had you know, a, lot, a lot of this you know goes you know, goes back to KD uh, theatre productions because they're the people that produce it, mm -hmm. but like the value that they do, which you know I, I want I uh, like love, is that you you want to try and make people go. Wow, this is a touring show. Do you know what I mean? Like we've had comments in other theatres going, "Oh, I can't believe the, you know, the size of the show." Mm -hmm. that, you know, you you never want to go. Oh, it has to fit in a van, so we're just going to bring one thing and just you know rely on good performances. Now, obviously, you have to rely on good performances, but mm -hmm. you want to do as much as you can, and that's what we do. So, but equally, there is a limit. Like you know, and it is like with most things, is money. Yes. Because yes. yeah, you can make a bigger scale. You could tour with bigger set. You could tour with bigger things. Go to bigger venues, but then everything is just being built up, and then you're charging more because you've got to make more back, which means you're reducing the people that can see it because you're out, you're, you're pricing people out of seeing, and it's you're talking about a family of say four is probably the average, like you mm -hmm. know, mum and dad, two children, and you're asking them to part with even more money because you've put more stuff in your show. Now, that's just not what I that that doesn't seem right to me. Do you know what I mean? Like, but equally, you want them to have as good a show as you can, and it's that's what you're. It's finding that balance, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I think we do a good job of that. That's mm -hmm. my belief, anyway. There's like, kind of like a creative strategy and a business strategy you kind of have to like merge together somewhere. Absolutely. Because we do, we do, we can't just do it for free. Especially no. when you go. <laughs> no. You know. No, absolutely. Because we need we've got bills to pay, haven't we? Yeah, and exactly. Real, and. To tour, you can't mm -hmm. do, you can't, like, touring is something that, uh, you know, you can't do as a, well, you probably could, I don't know, I'm sure there are people who do it as amateur like, for free, but I can't see how, because you no. you have to make all the living. You need you the have, finances. Yeah, you've, got pay, yeah. you've got to pay, mm -hmm. you've got to pay your way. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're doing, uh, you you know, the, the beauty of doing amateur stuff is that you rehearse in the evening, you perform in the evening, so you everyone can work during the day, earn their money, and then do their hobby in the evening. Like that's not how touring. You've got to drive mm -hmm. to Middlesbrough. Uh, you've got to drive to Middlesbrough. You, so you know, and then perform, and then and you you've got to do enough performances to make the money. It's yeah, yeah. I've got the, the, there, the, bit, the, the the business side. It's the business side. It, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that is not something I normally get involved in. Again, no, no, be, no. You're the that's, you're that's, the average performer and as a writer. Yeah, and and but but also like is that you know the glamour of it. You go. Watch it on show, watching watching on stage from the auditorium. Mm -hmm. Oh look, so this here's the comic, you know, this is silly Billy. Oh look, mm -hmm. haha, you know, I'm not going to say star of the show because that makes me sound awful. But like, you know, one of the lead characters yeah, in the yeah, show. That's fine. And then, but then when that when the show got, when the auditorium clears, I'm in my I'm in my blacks and I'm stripping the bars and I'm loading the van and I'm calling the cable and I'm calling calling the pack and you know this it isn't like you. As growing up, you, you'd watch a show and think, oh, look at that life. Like, that is yeah, yeah, yeah. the luxury. You're staying in a nice hotel tonight. Yeah. Whereas, really, in reality, you're staying in the smallest Premier Inn going, oh, probably. I mean, you know, <laughs> let's not throw shade at no. Premier Inn. <laughs> Premier Inn is the creme de la creme. Yeah, morning. yes. Well, when you're in the, well, when you've so lived travel, this life. The travel lodges are, ah. the, are, the, are the, you know, and, and not, again, not throwing shade, you get some nice travel lodges. Mm. You get some not so nice travel lodges yeah, as well. Yeah, you've been in any of them budget ones that don't have windows. You haven't been that low yet. I haven't. I don't think so. No, there are don't a couple. Of, there are a couple. They're more and more popping up now. Oh, where well, they're I look like, it's to as that. many as many rooms as possible in it's one. Like the I, in like one in Japan, space. where they have like the. That's essentially what they're starting to build over over here. Yeah. So uh, look out for those. That'll save you some money. Can't wait. But like, if you want a if you want a room for like thirty quid a night. It, but the, it's a bed, a bed, a toilet, and a shower, literally. Yeah. Um, I stayed in one once, and it was 
very claustrophobic. <laughs> really? Yeah, but in the, when you're doing this kind of work, some, sometimes all you need is that bed. The thing is, it, you, know? you don't, you're not in it. Like yeah. in the, it, you, you literally travel to the venue, to, to the mm -hmm. town that you're going to the venue if you have the time to get there in before the day before. So, you, so say for example, we're going from here to Kettering. Mm -hmm. So we'll travel to Kettering and we'll stay in a hotel. You sleep there, you wake up the morning, you check out. Yeah. You, you, you just need a bed. And then you do your show in Kettering and then you travel up to Middlesbrough. Um, not that I think that is the fun, but I mean, you get like those long like nights. So you're, you, travel, you, you do your show, so you get out of the venue at eight and then you travel for four hours to the next place. So you're, you're not getting in till, mm -hmm. you know, 12 o'clock. You go to bed, you wake up, you then travel an hour to the venue, get in, do the show, get out, get in the van, travel to the next area. Get, you're not in, like, they are just beds. It yeah, doesn't yeah. matter, it, who cares? You just want it to be, you know, a, safe and just a place to sleep. To just sleep. It's a yeah. place to sleep. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like the luxury, the, 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 the glamour. The it's not real, is it? It's not real, <laughs> no. I mean, I, I toured uh, before, before I was in shows, I toured with uh, Rory mm -hmm. before we both started working here full time. So we were both casuals here, but we went, we toured with a uh, production of uh, Wizard of Oz, mm -hmm. uh, starring Bobby Dabrak. Okay. And we toured on tour buses. Mm -hmm. uh, again, that sounds way more glamorous than it is. Because we had, you had a tour, you had a crew bus and a, uh, and a, a cast bus. Mm -hmm. So you had all the cast one, crew on the other we call them Priscilla and Dave um, you, you can guess which one was which um, <laughs> and the Dave smelt like uh, feet because you would everyone was chucking off you'd, you'd chuck your steel toe caps that you've had on all day yeah and they smell bad. yeah of course yeah. <laughs> uh, but I mean again you think tour bus glamorous yeah mm -hmm. that's what rock stars do and it's like mm. yeah they probably stay at hotels at the other end though like mm. they're on a tour like we were in Pretty much what you described, coffins. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. With a with one side that was a, a it's a curtain, and it had like a, don't get me wrong, it had a little communal area at the back, not big enough to house all of the people that were like you know you could sleep. Because I think you could seat fourteen people, mm -hmm. and obviously you only one toilet, and you're not allowed to defecate in the toilet. You can't poo in it. No, no poo. Number no. one, number one's only. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, it had it had a fridge. I mm -hmm. think I don't know I don't remember using it like it would have only been for alcohol because realistically I couldn't see um, most people couldn't see while it was in motion because you're laying flat and it's, it's oh, it just made you feel sick yeah, yeah, of course. so all you did is you just sat on the bus and just drunk while you were uh, going to the <laughs> next, to the next, next venue just to, so, that, so that when you got there you could go straight to sleep but yeah again it's exactly the same you do the show you then do the get out and that was that what they were um, much bigger that was like an arctic like so that was a big that was a much bigger scale tour mm -hmm. and uh yeah it was brutal like that was you know it was you were just tired all the time i was a lot younger then as well and you yeah so what are the tours like now then so what's this tour going to be like this year Which is, is this what how is this going to be fun or is this going to be always is fun. Gonna, is they're always fun they're, oh right okay because you're making it sound like a horror story <laughs> oh like. yeah but the thing is <laughs> so, it, so there is a side to it that's oh enjoyable. they're always fun yeah. they're, again though it's all about the people I have been exceptionally lucky and hopefully my luck continues that I you know the, the, the amount of stories that have cut like that that tour alone Wizard of Oz mm. I've met up with uh, people that I worked with on that tour and obviously the dame who's in Panto with the Cowardly Lion on that tour is sort of how I got to know him um, and like we can still just randomly be sort of talking, and you just start talking about the tour, and it, it was it was some of the best time of fun I've ever had. Like it was fun. It is fun. So even with all the hard shit, yeah, the the the, the fun because the people the... make it fun. Uh, because the people you're with mm -hmm. are in the it's that camaraderie. Uh, you know, you're all in it together, so it's fun. And don't get me wrong, like there were always stressful times. Like you know, like so last year we toward Goldilocks mm -hmm. and there was yeah there was there were stressful moments in that in that tour there was like there was you know we you know you know what swipes are right no go on. so like you got uh, most well I don't say most some of the venues have like here are lucky to have a fly tower so okay. the scenery flies up and down like that mm -hmm. but if you haven't got the grid height or the or you're a hemp house or something like that sometimes it's not possible to to fly it out um, I mean, you can fly on hemp, but you're physically pulling the weight on a hemp bar, whereas a counterweight system 
is counterweighted so you don't feel the, the weight. Yeah. Um, so often you swipe, so you basically your cloth is on a track that so you pull it across like this. And that's that's how it works. Now obviously there's more potential for the bobbins, which is what they're tied onto, to get caught and get stuck. And then you've got a cloth either halfway in, halfway out, not coming in at all, won't move. Mm -hmm. Now that can happen and that is problematic. And so it happened on uh, in Goldilocks. Now luckily it happened off stage, you think luckily anyway, because you go, that's off stage. So it means it's not halfway through, so we'll just sort of muddle through. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're meant to be in a wood and there's a obviously a circus set behind us, but don't worry about we're that. We're acting, that. Yeah. we're act. We'll just act, we'll just be like, you know, and again, it's pantomime, so, you know, you don't actually have to draw attention to it, but you can just say, oh yes, look at this spooky forest. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And, and that's enough. It gets, and it gets a laugh and they, yeah. they understand that something's gone wrong and, mm -hmm. and all that. But it became, I was like, oh, and I was thinking, you know, and I, again, because I work backstage as well, I'm trying to think, how can, can I help? Is there anything I can do? What is, you know, some, and also as an actor, you're so removed from it. You don't mm -hmm. know what's actually happened. No. So I come off from the scene and run straight off. It's almost to... like you're in another world, aren't you? You're yeah, in another you're space. You're so separate. Time. You're so yeah. separate to it. Mm -hmm. And like, I can't imagine like what it would be like if you don't really have any grasp of what is actually going on. So there, as if you're just, if you're just, if you've just never worked backstage, mm -hmm. you don't really understand what's going on. So therefore you just like, I don't know, it's just not working. Pardon me. Um, so I walked, I came off stage and, you know, it was Dave. That I mentioned earlier, I was like, what's going on? It's like, that's stuck. And obviously in a minute, we need to set up the the bear's cottage, but we need a, we, we have no, we have no like, you know, there's nothing it's to not cover it up. And mm. we've got to bring on three chairs and three three beds. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, okay. And then and, uh, during this thing that everyone's like, the, the worst thing you can do in this circumstance is to, is to, sh to panic and mm. stress out because you need to be able, you need to communicate because I have you know, years of experience and stuff, I was able to just go, I've got an idea, just everyone just listen a second and I'll, I think I can come up with a solution. Mm -hmm. I, so I basically said, look, I've got a puppet that sprays water that I take into the next scene. I'm gonna take it into the auditorium, black the stage out, take it into darkness, put the set on. Great. Everyone was like, yeah, it's a great idea, great. I hadn't taken the thought to the next stage, which was, during that scene, at the end of that scene, it's a musical number that segues and we go through the forest. Mm -hmm. So this swipe comes back across. They strike the set and then it swipes back and then we're back in the, into the circus. Mm. So I hadn't, taken, I hadn't taken my thought process. No, you beyond. dealt with the problem in yeah. that hand. But there is a scene playing out and in a minute I've got to go back yeah. on. And, in that, and so I think to, to, to get us through to the next scene where we have to break the, break the chair and lay in the bed and be discovered by the bears, mm -hmm. we need that set on. Great, I'll get us to that point, I'll do this, we can do that, that will work together, brilliant, lovely, did that, went out there, was out there for ages until the puppet ran out of water, I was like, great, okay, I'm gonna go off, hope, and hopefully it's set, because I can't see the stages in darkness. Oh, the set's there, fantastic, and it was only while I was on stage, I was like, oh no, at the end of this scene, it's a musical number, and there is, there's nothing to block. So I was like, no, I don't know what they're gonna do, because I used to help uh, put, set the set up and, and strike it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, up, you know, when I went off stage, so I was like, mm, I don't know what's going to happen, and they just had to walk on stage in full in blacks and just pick it all up and take it off while the dance was happening downstage. There was just no, there was no, there was no other option, and no. I was like, oh, I'm probably not going to help, <laughs> just because it will look weird that if Silly Billy then walks on, walks and, starts, on and starts, starts doing it. it. But I was just like, uh. so you know, I I'd helped, but I hadn't helped but i did i mean the show, did, yeah. the, 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 show, show the show on. continued to go to move forward yeah. and i think i think that's the most important thing for the audience and for everyone involved is that it does continue to move yeah. because that's the worst thing that it has to if it has to a show stop it has to yes. show stop i've been i actually the only ever time that i've been involved in a show stop is on this stage really yeah what? that was uh, that was pantomime power cut Ooh. and the whole building went out and they and i couldn't remember what i couldn't remember why or what happened but everyone had to. Everyone went home halfway, oh, halfway wow. through the show and had to, had to stop. Had to like stop. stop and then yeah, stop, cancel. stop, and cancel. And we had to put on an extra show at the at the end of the run. Oh, wow. Um, but that happens very rarely. Something yeah, as I mean, big as that. Yeah. If you've got the the things like you've just explained the story that you've just talked about, where you've got the technical issues, you have to find a way to fight through them. And even if it is only dealing with the moment, yeah, and not panicking, that's yeah. something really key. There is the pat. You cannot. 
afford to to stress. The thing is, if you if you stress, you just you're not you're not think you you've got to think logically and actually like and it's hard, man. And like don't oh, get me wrong. like like because that is the moment you want to stress. Yeah, of course. Or, yeah. And like when, when I was when I was younger, I would have, mm -hmm. I would have been stressing. I would have been stressing. I'd have been going, oh my God, what do we do? I don't know what to do. Do you know what I mean? Because I didn't have the experience of going, okay, I know that that doesn't help. But, mm -hmm. you know, I'd been in those situations before and I was able to help in that instance. Like, you know, we had show stops on the panto just gone. And the, the, my thing with a show stop is you only stop the show if it is unsafe to carry on because, or it's really going to really be detrimental to the experience of like. Mm -hmm. So if something goes, so we got to a point where we were about to do a special effect, and it was all called to the music, and it, and you know, I was going to be, you know, elevated above the audience, and there was communication problems, and I was like, yeah, that's that's a sensible place to stop. Get this safety. Safety. Mm -hmm. We the audience, especially at Panda, they're with you. Like they want the show to carry on. They're not going to hold it against you that something went slightly awry. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those things. It just it, they happen. It's life here. It's the mm -hmm. it's the, you you could be in a show where it shows that we had a medical emergency one year. We had yeah. to stop a show because because someone was too ill to continue, and and then that was that was quite scary. But you know they they were fine. They were fine. It was all good. But you know we had the, we had that was one where we had to cancel the show. It's like we cannot continue without this person, and we need and they actually need medical attention urgently. So we have to stop. Mm -hmm. Like you know, and. At the end of the day, someone's life matters more than a bit of entertainment, like, yeah. as much as it means. And, and, like, and just the safety aspect of yeah. it is if you're going to be raised up on a harness and that's not working properly or the communication's yeah. there not yeah. properly, and like, how can, what, what is the value of risking, yeah. of risking that? No, it's not, it's not worth it. Mm. So, you know, th and they happen, like, you know, but then sometimes you can, on that same Wizard of Oz tour, um, a young chap broke his ankle and he broke his ankle in the wings. The show carried on. <laughs> like... I was there was loads of people around him and like the ambulance had been called and he was he was out the way enough that the show was carrying on on stage and I was like I mean do I carry on I mean I was pretty young so I was like it's not my call yeah I was like uh I'm just going to carry on doing the scene change because uh, every you know I can't do anything I can't make mm -hmm. fix his ankle and there's people he's being attended to by first aiders and stuff so I was just sort of like carrying on just saying oh what is going on this is weird just moving. the it's show finished they finished it. the show I couldn't believe it I think I think these these stories that you're telling telling me here I think they're giving me good examples of how having that technical knowledge having that outside knowledge of not just not just being the performer on the stage has benefited you yeah definitely definitely I think so I, I, I feel the benefit of it mm -hmm. like when I'm on stage and there's just like you don't like you think differently to to actors although i like when i wasn't doing it for a long period of time uh where i wasn't performing because i couldn't perform at like vicky hall and stuff while i've been working here as a technical manager mm -hmm. because they just they, well just time they, they time and you yeah. yeah so i didn't have the t i couldn't commit to the evenings and stuff like that um so it was a, until i started doing pantomime here I, I just didn't perform really for that period mm -hmm. and you would watch people and you'd and you'd you know you have that sort of backstage, on stage situation where you're like, God, what, absolutely, what's he doing? Why, what's he, do? there's a thing that happens, because like I say, I've worked backstage now for 13 years. Mm. There is a thing that happens when you become a performer where you just turn that bit of your brain off because you're just so focused on what you're doing. You just get actor brain, I call it. <laughs> and that, and they used to throw much, so much shade at performers and be like, oh God, they're so stupid. Mm. And actually you just go, they're not. It's just they're not thinking about anything else other than what they have to do. And mm. what they have to do has nothing to do with anything else other than the performance. So what type of thing would come up or would you notice actor brain? Where would you notice that? Like uh, just, just like walking into something, into the wing, tripping over something that's so obviously labelled. Mm. Like, just, just like... Something is there's just that I can't even articulate it very well to be honest. It's kind of like I've seen I've seen it. It's like the health and safety stuff backstage where someone will leave somewhere something really dangerous they wouldn't do in their normal everyday life. Yeah. But because they're going on in a minute, uh, they'll leave their cigarette on the side just continue yeah. burning. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean you don't get that anymore. But yeah. yeah. Any, but all right. Yeah. Yeah. That, but, but no. In yeah, the, yeah. In, back in the day. But, so you, know. you just don't think. Oh yeah. I've got. I've got to get. Oh I've. I've not got to. I'm not in the place I'm meant to be. So I'm going to run through a completely different route yes. than I would normally run at this point in the show, mm -hmm. which is so dangerous yeah. because you, you just, don't know what's you flying, don't, you especially don't know, in a building like this where things are flying up and down. But and you also you, you can just run into someone. Mm -hmm. Like that's the one thing that really irritates me when like when I'm like 
performing in panto is when I do the same thing every show. Mm -hmm. So I'm quite meticulous in like, I'll stand here, I'll walk here, I'll, t I'll talk to this person at this point. I'll, I'm, I, everything's the same. I keep it all the same, very routine based because mm -hmm. if it works, it works. Mm -hmm. So like sometimes people will talk to me and I, I you know I want to talk to people obviously like I'm I'm a nice person I like to think but you know you go and there's always that little bit of me that's like I don't normally talk to you here yeah and, I don't yeah this doesn't what am I missing what am I not doing right now mm -hmm. that I should be doing because it's it's taken out of your routine yeah and then that's when mm -hmm. you go oh, I didn't pick up the thing that I need to and then you start running across yes yeah, but yeah I, like I like things to be the same I mm -hmm. really like routine which is difficult when you work in theatre because you know you're a new show every day and it's quite difficult yeah. but. That's what I like about Panto, it's the same. But it's a good skill to bring into that. Yeah. So, what would you say to someone that is a young actor, like yourself, that's considering that doing, that when you was young, oh, right. <laughs> when you was young, and you're young and you're just thinking about acting, but there's an opportunity to do something backstage, would you encourage them to do that? I mean, there's, I mean, look, the simple thing is I've been I've been very lucky with my circumstances and how it's all worked out for me. That doesn't mean it would do the same for someone else. But being in it's, my answer is twofold because what I don't want to do is encourage people that have zero interest, no interest at all, in working backstage because it is hard work and it is a slog and it and and the the people backstage don't get all the thanks, they don't get the adulation, they don't get to stand there and bow at the end and get everyone applauding and tell them what a good job they've done. They turned up before me, they'll be here later than me. I, you know, and I always make a point of saying that at the end of the you know, show and just giving thanks to them and because I was them for the many years mm. and they, are, they do work as hard as the people on stage. It's the different craft. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying one is better, more important than the other. One brought, wouldn't work, one wouldn't be here without the exactly, other. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly, absolutely. And they do a really thankless task. And I say, they, they turn up before and they stay after. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. um, So my point is, as I may have noticed, I go around the houses when I start talking and I just ramble on. It's, it's good, Ben, I understand you. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, it, it's important to not just give a straight answer, though, because I think there's something within the way that you're telling it is more honest. Wow. And coming from a more authentic place. Just coming from my brain. Just coming from my mouth. There's, there's no filter. <laughs> yeah. uh, although I don't think I've sworn yet, so I'm very pleased with myself. Um, but yeah, so like, my advice would be, if you're willing to be committed to it, mm -hmm. definitely. Because you're you're putting yourself in and around people that might help you out. It's exactly what happened to me. Like, But what uh, you get a lot of is people that are just doing it as a, as a, as a way in. Now I didn't do that. I, as I say, it, I didn't go. I'm going to go work at the playhouse because I will get opportunities because I, I'm going to work at the playhouse. That's never. It was never a thought process. I went to work here because it was adjacent to my interests and it was something new. And I've actually found it re really exciting in the first instance. Like, oh, this is new. I know. I'm learning how to wire a plug. I don't have to wire a plug. I'd never needed to wire a plug. You know, I'd never done anything like that. So wiring a 13 amp plug, which is probably something most people can just do anyway. That was like, whoa, I'm, I'm, I'm an electrician. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It was, it was like great fun. And I, like I said to earlier, without wanting to be like, oh, I do everything the best. But mm. like, I gave everything to it. I wanted to be better at it. I don't like being, I don't like doing things. I not, don't like not being good at things. Like it makes me not want to do them. Mm -hmm. So I put effort into being good at it. You know, I, I liked being learning new things and being able to be knowledgeable and then taking on responsibilities and you know being able to call a show and being able to prop a show I propped a show I had to just you know gifted a gab yeah I can do that right now I've got to do it do you know what I mean like mm -hmm. you know and but I I was here six days a week I sat on stage door for 12 hours signing people in and out I did every follow spot shift that I was offered like I I did all the the rubbish jobs that I had to do. I didn't see my friends for months. Do you know what I mean? To the point where it had, you know, I had to basically like, please stop. Not please always ask for me. Like, don't just think I'm. I'm not doing it because I don't want to be friends with you. Like, you know, it was hard. There was a period of time where like my mates were just meeting up and they weren't inviting me anymore because I was never available. Mm -hmm. So I was always here. 
but I was I, that's just who I am. I'm what? Oh god, this is such a long way. You made answer. you made you made the sacrifices for the position. Yeah, to a degree, mm -hmm. but like it wasn't. Again, I wasn't doing it because oh, I really want to climb the ladder. Like I, I was. It was only again. It was only till when Rory became the, the the like top dog that I actually was. My my wage was at, I was on like a lower wage than anyone that's worked in the department since I've been like since since I left that post because mm -hmm. I was on a minus minus school wage I was like it was like way below like what it should have been it just it never got looked at no one ever looked at it because I didn't ever complain and that was on oh, that's on me mm -hmm. I could have gone on oh, I'm, I'm on quite a low wage compared to everyone else and I actually do the same job as everyone else now but I just I just did it do you know what I mean that's on me and that is on me but my point is is that I committed to it and I got lucky with opportunities that came my way and yes I would suggest say working if you're if you're not getting the gigs as an actor or, or, or a musician or anything anything that's adjacent to, to working in live theatre then working mm -hmm. in theatre is great but it's really hard work and that's why I don't think people sort of stick it out because actually go oh it's, it's hard it's as I said it's three words for, for the same thing mm -hmm. it's like lighting boards and sound sound desks and I mean, I don't know it all. I'm the technical manager. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm meant to know more than I probably do, but like, mm -hmm. it's so broad and it's always changing. You know, we, you started here and then now it's net, all networked here, but it wasn't when I started. That's changed in 13 years, which you think sounds like epically long, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not actually that long of time, but things have just come on so much. Mm. It's so much to think about. You can't just turn up and go, all right, cool, I'm going to know it all in like two minutes. Like, yeah. I don't know and it, it all and it's now. Not, and it's not a gateway to being in, to being into a different field, into a different field. No. But it, but at the same time, it can support you Yeah, and, and as it, an actor. Yeah, I and think you're proof that it can support yeah, you as an actor. Yeah, 100%. And like, it can give you, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, no, it's not a way in, because mm -hmm. you will meet people. But don't do that as the goal. But, 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 but that's not the reason, that like, that's not, it's not guaranteed. Like that's not a way in. Is in. you would only be disappointed. Yeah, I feel like I feel that. like if you if you if you went in to go within X amount of time because I work mm -hmm. backstage in a theatre, I'm going to be on stage in the West End. That's probably happened like three times. Possibly. I don't know. I'm speaking that's three like, times ever. Ever. Yeah. yeah like yeah, it, yeah, it yeah. probably doesn't happen. Like yeah. That. I know. I, I know someone that's ushering in the West End because they think that that's going to be the key to being on that stage. That's going to be that they're in the right. Possible, uh, possible, but very unlikely. Yeah, it's not like you know. May maybe working on the craft that you want to do might be a better use of your time, and uh, and maybe maybe it's nice to be. Yeah, in the, but it's maybe nice. Maybe it's nice to be in the environment. You are going to the, meet the people. Environment. You are going to meet people. Yes, like that's that yeah. is the key. Like you are going to meet people. You are gonna you are gonna see the people that are on stage. You might be able to like chew their ear and stuff. But mm -hmm. and that's absolutely fantastic and valid. And yeah. that's absolutely and like. And like you say, ushering. And I'm not again. I'm not trying to say ushering is easy because I'm dealing, no, no, dealing no. with dealing with the public is is not easy. No. But like, it's not the same as working backstage. In as much as there's there's so much to learn, like that, and it's always evolving and it's dangerous, mm -hmm. and the hours are horrible, and you know you're as I say you're they are there after the show, you're there way before the show. So you really have to want to do it, is what I'm saying, I think. In a again, in a really, yeah. really long-winded long way, like, there's got to be easier ways. <laughs> it's basically what I'm saying. There has to be easier ways. Maybe ushering is it. Yeah, you are still a, you're still adjacent, but you're only there for the show period, yeah. a little bit before and a little bit after, rather than two hours, loading a truck. But if you're looking for some additional skill sets... Yeah, absolutely. ...or to get in a different, a different perspective, mm -hmm. for me, I started getting involved with, with the technical side of it and directing, producing and writing. I saw that as a me being an actor, I could learn a bit more about the other sides that, that make the acting work and strengthen my skills mm -hmm. as, a, as an actor. Yeah. And I think that's what it's done, done for you. 100%. Like, but, more... but, but yeah, going in with the right ideas is important. Yeah, I mean the value, like your value is greater as well. Uh, you, see, you know, if you know more about the whole thing, do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like you just, you're just going to be uh, more understanding of everything if you know what it's like to be in both sets of shoes. Like I, I often say around, you know, the pantomime here, I'm like, I have the best perspective of what it's like because I've done both sides 
properly. Like I've been fully in it and I've been fully out of it and I've done that job and I've done this job. So I know what it's like to be you and I know what it's like to be them. And I say you and them, like, because I, obviously I work with, I work with the, my team yes, here yeah, um, closely throughout the year. So it's like, I do understand, like, even though it may look like, I, how would I understand? Because mm -hmm. like, you know, a lot of those guys haven't known me other than to be in the show. But like, you know, it's, you know, I have, I've, be, I've worked backstage in a pantomime, it's a slog. But the one thing I do say is that you get to enjoy yourself a little bit more off stage because you can have a drink and be hung over backstage. Like, <laughs> like you can you can overindulge and go, oh, I've yes, had yeah, one yeah. too many drinks last night, feel a little bit ropey. And you can carry that on your face. You can mm -hmm. just, oh yeah, as long as you do your job efficiently, you're not, you know. And you're not still drunk. Yeah, you're, you're not still drunk. Health and safety, health and safety. And, yeah, you and, care about that, Yeah, right? cool, absolutely. Yeah, like, that's key. My point <laughs> being is that you can, you can feel rough, you can be rough, you can be tired, you can mm -hmm. be hung over, you can, all that you stuff. Can, you can have emotional things yeah, going on like, in your life. You, you, you just do your job, but mm -hmm. it's so much harder to do that when you've got to come out, especially if you're playing a character like I play, which is like, you know, it's got to be the energy. That's really hard. So yeah. therefore, like, you know, I don't, I just don't really, I mean, I'm not a big drinker anyway anymore. Not, not like back in the day when we used to go out, <laughs> but I don't, yeah. So like, I really, you know, I don't drink much during panel because it's, it's too exhausting. I'm so, you need the energy, so you need the energy for, the, for the audience. Yeah, exactly. And they give yeah. you, they do give you some, and there are days like a free show day, you need them. You yeah. need them to give you that little bit of extra stuff, but you know, equally, they're not going to give you anything if you don't give it to them first. It is a you know, it works both ways, but they've paid the money, so you've got to give it. You've got to give something to them before they're going to give it back to you. So that's why I just, I always try and give everything I've got, even if it's not a lot. <laughs> but, that's wonderful, Ben. This has been this has been really nice catching up with you. Be shaking hands. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's, what I that <laughs> that's what I thought that was. That's what I thought that was. It was out. It was out. Wanna, I'll put it out there. I didn't want to leave you hanging. Don't leave me hanging, yeah, mate. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah. I appreciate that. One last question, mate. Yeah. So we talked a lot about the past. Yeah. And all the things and places you've been. Yeah. What are your hopes and dreams for the future? Ooh, I don't know. I've, I'm kind of looking into like. So I've started. Uh, I'm looking at like doing something more with City Billy. So I've kind of on social media. I've started. Uh, uh, silly Billy Benno as a kind of thing, which I'm hoping to like start doing like a YouTube channel as that character. Nice. That's my hope. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, again, it's that thing of learning technology, learning how to actually make it and make it worthwhile. Because I don't want to, I don't want to waste anyone's time. Do you know what I mean? When you like people be like, that's rubbish. Where does that come into it? What wasting anyone's time? Where 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 does that come into if you've got an idea to create something? I don't know. It's, I guess it's a self doubt, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. like I don't want to. I don't want to do anything that's not good. So no. until I'm confident that I can deliver something that's, I feel like will be worthwhile, and then to, to then say to people like I've made a thing, and I feel like you know you're you cause it would be for, it would be for kids, obviously. Like mm -hmm. I'm not sure how many adults would want to watch it. Maybe they would. Who knows? No, I think they definitely would. It's <laughs> a great idea. <laughs> Me just being a prat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Doing the thing that you do. Just a profe professional, professional prat. prat. <laughs> That's what I call myself. I'm a professional prat. Yeah. But what, what, a, what a great way to, to spread what you're already doing and, and make, take, that onto a, take that onto another level and yeah. potentially that could grow into a, a larger audience. Hopefully, like, you know, that, you know, ultimately that, I don't, yeah, exactly, the thing is, it's like, what is the goal? I don't know what the goal is. Um, well, maybe, um, maybe it's just a seed of an idea, it's something really small right now, that's the basics. Yeah. Yeah, and where that might go to, you don't, you don't know exactly. No, I don't know. I, yeah. Just a few people have sort of said, oh, you should do some more with it, and I've sort of gone, oh, yeah, I could do, mm -hmm. like, and... That's, this is the, that's an adventure anyway. So I, I look forward to seeing it. Uh, I, look, I, I, I really do. I think that is. I think that sounds perfect for you. Well, I'll uh, I'll make sure that you get a link. <laughs> you send me the link. Yeah, definitely. Do. I haven't done anything yet. No. Well, you said like I said, it's an idea. It's a yeah, seed. It is. And let's watch it grow. Thanks, Ben. We are doing that. <laughs> <handshake. laughs> Appreciate it. It's been wonderful. It's been good. I've enjoyed it. Yeah. It's good fun. And uh, if anyone was watching or listening. We appreciate them too, don't we? Yeah, of course we do. Yeah, we appreciate. appreciate you. That, I appreciate. I appreciate anyone that will willing to listen to me do anything. Mm. So whether it's be on the stage, being a prat, or just you know generally talking to someone, you know, another prat. Yeah, <laughs> pair of prats. <laughs> pair of prats. Maybe that's yeah. the title. And uh, yeah, if if you'd like to hear more conversations, or don't so you don't miss out on conversations, you know what you need to do. Yep. Come. You need to. 
click and subscribe. That's it. Yes. <laughs> you need yes. to like. Can you tell? You like, can check. Like, <laughs> like and subscribe. And subscribe. Yes. That's what's key, and then you'll get notified every time a new conversation pops up. Like and so subscribe. Like and subscribe. You know, the man. And, yeah. and you can tell that that in no way was pre <laughs> because You can see the panic on my face. <laughs> like he's asking me a I question. Don't know what, I don't know what the answer is. <laughs> and, I did. Uh, I did know the answer. Yeah. So. And if you want to find out more about the BTS Creative Academy, what do they do then? They probably just search, look, look, search, 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 search on the for web. What? Uh, really, really easy. BTS Creative, Creative Academy. Dot. No, that's just, just, it. just that. That's, that's all that. you have to do. It comes up on everything. It's everything. On everything. You'll find it wherever you X. go. X. X. TikTok, TikTok, YouTube, Snapchat, Twitter. Snapchat. Yeah, kids are on there apparently. No, I never, I yeah. don't know. I'm not, I'm no, it's, it's complicated. It's but, but I'm it's a, where I can't believe I'm on TikTok. Yeah, like, it's where the kids are, so. Well. They're trying to stay away from us old ones. Yeah, I don't blame them. We're, we're, it's been nice, mate. Yeah, it's been good. I've enjoyed it. Catch you. Yeah. You Lovely. Too. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>